This meeting is being recorded. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Greyhorn Pagans podcast. We are on Ragnarok part two tonight. Uh, it's going to be a very interesting discussion again. And before we dive deep, before we spin the web of weirds, um, let's just all introduce ourselves. Um, I'd say ladies first, Miss Local Goddess, how about you introduce yourself? <laughs> Hello, my name is Rachel. I have an Odyssey channel called Local Goddess and Telegram. Sunforge, you've seen me on Meeting Spiders Welcome and Odin's Alchemy and a few other places, but it's good to be back with the tribe for some more Ragnarok. Good to have you back. On to the Joshua's starting with, uh, let's start with the branch. Hello, hello. Thank you for hosting once again. This is one of my favorite topics, the end of the world. Uh, yeah. Can't say that I'm sad to see it go. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. Anywhere we can find you, anything you have going yeah, on? Yeah, um, I do use Telegram um, extensively. So you can find me on there, Joshua the Branch. Uh, I'm in the Weaving Spiders groups uh chance gardens uh, interverse um i also have a couple of groups where we sing uh <laughs> and uh, just research like you know online um, current events through the lens of biblical prophecy so we do a show called the solomon report uh, every once in a while we've done like 60 or 70 episodes of that so it's pretty interesting. Sounds awesome. On to the next Joshua Fortini. What's up? Howdy, howdy. I am uh, Joshua in the tribe on Telegram. You'll find me as Joshua, Thane of the Great Horn Pagan tribe. Uh, just about everywhere else. I am Child of Ash 420 on Mines, Odyssey, um, thinking about starting a rockfin channel so keep an eye out for that one but pretty much everything goes on uh goes into the tribe on telegram so you'll find out where i am going to be posting most of my material by checking there awesome mr king of cups chris welcome back bro thanks <laughs> yeah i was zoom user last time so if you saw my name you recognize my voice i was on Ragnarok park when i was zoom user i got complaints that telling people wanted to know my name <laughs> so i am king of cups um i also have um a odyssey channel called king of cups i have two episodes out one over um hopefully roger rabbit another one with the branch you yeah. um <laughs> that goes over Stranger Things. Um, I might expand out onto YouTube. So if you're not familiar with Odyssey, keep an eye out for um, King Cups on YouTube in the next coming weeks. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I'm I'm in all the Telegram groups. Um, Universe, Weeding Spiders. I'm usually on Weeding Spiders on Wednesdays and Saturdays. And it's been fun to do these with um, the Great Hunt Pagan tribe as well. Awesome. And last but not least, new guy, Mr. Burdog. Hey guys, greetings. It is a pleasure to be here with fellow high-minded beings. Um, I'm here more to learn than I am to share because I can tell that I'm already in the presence of a uh, very knowledgeable and I wanna, I wanna receive a lot of gnosis today. So it is an honor to be here. Um, I, on, I have a YouTube channel it is, uh, you can look at it uh, up as Bird Dog 45. Uh, I am the, I am the uh, Bird Dog, the Crypto Ronin, where I combine esoteric knowledge like astrology, numerology, gematria, et cetera, and use that to invest in crypto assets. So I like to use that information as practical. I like to combine the esoteric with, 
I like to affect the, my uh, my own reality <laughs> and I need this matrix money. Not that I really care about it. It's just a tool for me. But anyway, please check out my YouTube. And at some point I may have to get off of that and go to Odyssey just because that's the sign of the times. But anyway, thank you. It was a true honor to be here. You're most welcome, bro. You're most welcome. Interesting that you're uh, using all that esoteric stuff to uh, like make make all the gains for yourself. That's that's how you use it. It, good. it actually works, um, especially when you use gamatria and you can look at cycles. You know, you look at a, a word like whatever and you get 58, for mm -hmm. example. You go, OK, I, it's 58. Who cares? But you can literally look at like every, certain cycles, like every 58 days, this happens. So uh, I generally don't care about money, but it is a tool that we need in this, you know, it, it's just a tool um, Unfortunately. and it happens to work. It, it, astrology affects up your reality and it affects, and we know the controllers of, it, it's decoding our reality, learning the code, learning the cheat codes. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Hey, if they cheat, so can we. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, you brought up cycles, which is very, uh, very topical, because that's basically what what Ragnarok is. Um, going to try and uh, and catch everybody up real quick who may be listening for the first time. Like I don't know why you would start with uh, with part two, but hey, you have those people. Um, Ragnarok or the Kali Yuga are um, in the Nordic uh, religions, in the uh, the Aryan Vedic Aryan religions, are the end times or the end time cycles, um, the different ages and stages of humanity that we go through, uh, rise and fall as everything in nature basically does where um, and a lot of us believe a lot of us pagans a lot of us um, just spiritual religious people we do believe that we are either nearing the end of this cycle or we are at the end of this cycle and we're just waiting for the for the final collapse Till the uh, till the next cycle begins and we can start building up again and hopefully possibly do it better this time and learn from the past and learn from our mistakes because currently if history teaches us anything it's that we don't learn from history we keep making the uh, the same mistakes over and over again and whether that be man-made or just the will of the gods that's what we're uh, we're discussing in this podcast and on the previous podcasts reckon rock part one so this is all of you catching up real quick um where shall we start uh joshua Fredini, you had some very interesting stuff that you wanted to uh, to dive a bit deeper on deeper in on uh, on this podcast yeah um well i guess we start right at the stanzas where it all stems from um the germanic texts uh the voluspa um is the source of all of it the last 20-ish or so stanzas from about number 40 on are really the telling of the coming of Ragnarok and uh, even some things that happen after it that we'll get into in this one that is uh, that's very telling of it being a cycle. So I guess if you want to start, like, can, it, can you uh, queue up the first couple stanzas and we'll, uh, we'll roll it from there? Yes, I'll, um, I'll put them up real quick. Give me a moment. All righty. Uh, the the vulva for any that aren't familiar are the seers of the germanic tribes the nordic tribes they were the uh the 
the uh, the ones that were able to tap directly into Scyther and see into events. They couldn't necessarily see the whole future, but they got enough of it that they told of it so that when people saw it coming, they knew what to react to. All right. And you said Number there were 41. A- you said there were a couple of specific ones that you uh, yeah. that you felt were very relevant. Which one were that again? Yeah, um, roll it up to number forty-one. It's at the top of that. Forty-one. That's right here. Um, yep. There feeds he full on the flesh of the dead, and the home of the gods. He reddens with gore. Dark grows the sun, and in summer soon. Basically, before Ragnarok, we have a long winter. Uh, There is a few different interpretations of it, but it is basically three winters long. Some people interpret it as being three years. Some people look at the Norse cycle like they had winter and summer. They didn't really observe other seasons. So it was either winter or not winter. And... Winter started on a very specific date for them, and they they watched that cycle. They celebrated around it, right? One of their winters would not turn to summer, and it would turn into three winters long. And that's how I read the interpretation. And that's the first sign of it is the darkening out of the sun, right? And that's number 41, right? Now, that is actually in the telling of a couple different apocalyptic just trying to say uh, prophecies, if you will, from multiple different religions is a darkening of the sun being a sign that something was coming about bringing the end. It was one of the many signs in some of them. So I think you have to look at the fact that all of these different religions have that same view maybe it all stems from the witnessing of a cycle in the past of all of these different religious groups you know what i mean maybe it's not something that just happens in the future it's something that their ancestors saw in the past and that's just a sign of you know the the global cycle spinning all over again from the inundation to the resurrection of the human race Oh, Branch, you just posted some really interesting in the in the chat about the uh, the darkening of the sun. Care to elaborate on that? Because I feel that's really, um, yeah, really, really fitting. It's it may be biblical, but as we um, have already noticed, as we already discussed in uh, in part one, there are a lot of um, a lot of connections, a lot of similarities a lot of sinks if you will between the uh the biblical end times and the uh let's call them aryan vedic end times i think there's a lot of parallels between them especially the veneration of the father you know you got odin as the all father uh father our our father in heaven for instance so yeah it's very pie proto into uh, indo european feeling But um, yeah, so the sun will be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming um, of the great and glorious day of the Lord. That's Joel 231. And that is also quoted in Acts, I think, 216 through 17, when the apostles are quoting this. Uh, But Joel was a prophet. And it's said that there was an eclipse when... um, christ was crucified that it went dark supernaturally as well um so i think that's kind of interesting and then also in revelation 6 12 and when i saw the lamb open the sixth seal there was a great earthquake and the sun became black like sackcloth of goat's hair and the whole moon turned blood red so again this reference there which is right before revelation 6 13 when the stars fall and the tree is shaken so I kind of see that as Jupiter's so, um, but it's a fig tree in this parable. 
which I was talking to Rachel today about wasps and pigs <laughs> and how symbolic they can be. But yeah, there's um, some biblical context with that particular scene. That's, I wanted to ask you also in the biblical text, is there any reference to like roosters crowing? Oh yeah. Man, or totally. a bird. Okay. Cause I'm, I'm looking through the, um, the, the stanzas the other night and I noticed there's three roosters. They each signal the coming of one of the armies or signs that is bringing hmm. Ragnarok. Well, and okay. The so, first one is named Fjallar. I think it was just a big red rooster that yelled and brought the army of the giants, if I'm not mistaken. Wow. Well, okay. So uh, the morning that Christ was taken by the authorities, the rooster crowed three times. And he had already told Peter, his disciple, he said, you're going to deny me three times before the rooster crows. And he, and he did, because when the authorities came, Peter found himself lying to people saying, no, I don't know who he is. And then the rooster crowed. He did it again. The rooster crowed. He did it again. The rooster crowed. And it was like at that moment, he's like, whoa, <laughs> it's like, I really messed up. And, but, but they came for him in the, in the night. Uh, and that really uh, hits hard because, you know, that's when the cops come to kick down your door. Right. And uh, four or five o'clock in the morning that's the watch time so there's like watchmen that are supposed to be up watching over the sheep or whatever and, and that story none of his disciples would stay up with him and help him pray they all fell asleep and then so he had to go off by himself and pray so i think all that's very much related to like ragnarok comes and who's watching for it right so only certain people are really up and watching and, and you know we can see it <laughs> and the cock crowing man i'm telling you that, that so i'll do a real short weave here that i found compelling uh so not to sound vulgar of course but uh it does relate back to phallic stuff so we refer to it as a cock um but also who who does this story involve peter which is another word for the phallus and it reminds me of uh the golden phallus that um, was crafted to create Horus. So when Isis made it for Osiris, he was cut up into like, what, 14 pieces, I think. And the fish swallowed the, the phallus. So she had to craft one out of gold. And that's what created, you know, the sun or whatever. Um, so in, the, in that case, I kind of see the, the, and we relate the sun and gold to that type of energy right like top yeah. down and it's a the, circle the gold the golden gold. rays and all of that yeah and that's what a, an obelisk is top down you know so i see a lot of symbolism there with the um the gold member <laughs> as it were and it oh being i i hate stuff. that movie i do too dude <laughs> but apparently they're tipping their hat to that who what's a gold member and there's no other story I know of that features a gold member. So, I mean, it's pretty steeped in occultism, probably. If yeah. you could bear to watch it again, um, get something out of it. <laughs> okay. Have you guys ever heard of the Sky People of Peru? Maybe. There are, are these they... statues that look like, I, I want to see there's five or six of them, but it looks like, they look like giant phalluses themselves, but they're also painted to have phalluses. Oh, okay. And they're way up on the side of this mountain. But if you look at the other similarities in their tellings, these were Caucasian people that were basically giant compared to them that came and gave them some kind of foretelling that allowed them to survive an apocalypse. <laughs> so, I mean, I think there's a very phallic nature to a lot of in in a lot of the prophecies there's a lot of that gusto that macho bravado hero you know what i mean so of course i think if there's a pissing contest to pardon the french you know what i mean they're they're going to pull out their weapons well it's interesting that you're saying that because i couldn't help but think of the vulva and how it sounds feminine 
because that's a female body part. But and Rachel yeah, raised her hand. I, I was, has, yeah, and Chris, yeah, raised. let's let's go to, <laughs> let's go to Chris. Chris has has a has his hand up for a while, uh, arm probably cramping. So, uh, Chris, what do you what do you got for us? You wanna you wanna weave on this a bit? Yes. Well, first I got to say it's very apropos that King of Cups comes on after you we're talking about these phallic things. Because we all know that King of Cups stands oh, for yeah. big cock energy. <laughs> oh, yeah. I forgot. <laughs> forgot all about that. But anyway, it's jokes aside, what I was going to weave on this was... That's why the ladies uh, love you. <laughs> 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 um, Bird Dog kind of hinted at this um, in the chat here, which I love because I was thinking along the same lines. Um, you know, we're talking about blocking out the sun. And I was trying to, I was trying to think of a modern day example of that. And we all know the quote conspiracies when they're not really conspiracies because they confirmed it that they're trying to block out the sun. Um, and have they made us, you know, scared of the sun because oh, it is it, going to cause cancer. So you better put on these toxins for sunscreen yeah. to screen yeah. yourself to the sun. There was even that song way back when, if you remember, that was like telling you to wear sunscreen. It was a really weird song. Yeah. Oh, wow. And yeah. So also, sorry, if I can go inside if it's too loud. I'm outside in a storm. So if I didn't you oh, that's, loud, that, know. that's that's what I'm hearing. No, that's that's fine. Yeah. Uh, like, what was it? Too- what was it last time you had? Cicadas. Yeah, cicadas. That was. Oh, so yeah. I brought the cicadas and now I brought the storm. So. You're always <laughs> bringing something. Of the end. Always yeah. bringing something. <laughs> uh, but yeah, right. I just, I, just, I wanted um, to bring up the whole, you know, like I mentioned, the whole blocking up the sun and the whole, the whole sunscreen of it all, which is, to me, you know, that's been going on for decades now. Um, but I feel like now it's become even more so because you know they they've stuck us inside so now, um i've i've noticed um like these trends um i guess you call, call them viral like tiktok type of trends even though i'm not on tiktok but i still see these videos because of other social medias that people share um but it there's this one audio sample i have heard in a lot of videos where it goes so what do you put in these um outdoors and it's like it, it, it to me it it's um it's um they're kind of demonizing kind of separating us from the 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 natural you know from the sunlight and all that so I just wanted to bring that yeah. up yeah uh, that's that's the one thing that I always questions like oh there is a so-called pandemic going on let's keep everybody out of the sunshine out of the fresh air let's you know close the gyms so nobody can exercise but we'll leave the liquor stores and the weed stores and all that we'll leave them open and mcdonald's can still do deliveries and all that they so also closed all the spiritual centers yeah they closed every yep. one of the spiritual centers was what the first thing they did close the churches the temples the synagogues all shut down yeah because of gatherings and whatever which well I, I i i i to this day question it and until we have definite answers i will keep questioning it but uh rachel you had your uh your hand up you uh you sorry it's you it's, did, you it's one of, it's one of those streams again so oh no that's it's great that's how things flow you know everybody's got their stuff for sure um I was going to say, you know, with this, you know, we're talking about this, this phallic energy and all this stuff. It seems to be very masculine going around. Um, even Odin going down to talk to the vulva is that same energy, that same desire to shelter, to give the people a heads up. That is the masculine's role. It is the container for the feminine chaos. It's not a container to control it's a container to allow to thrive. You know, there's there's different types of garden walls you could have. You know, are you going to be as a man, you know, a hedge 
or are you this you know that grows and can be moved and grows with the chaos or are you a stone wall that's immovable and nothing gets in and nothing gets out and no one can enjoy it but you and you alone you know so i think mm -hmm. it's actually really kind of cool that odin's going down and asking the vulva and he's he's giving his right eye and he's accessing the knowledge of the feminine chaos because as humans who contain both parts, we need that. We need that example and how to do that. You know, how do I access this as a woman? How do I access this as a man? So I like that we're seeing this play out in, you know, other other cultures. I think we're going to see that play out because that's the nature of those energies. We're going to see somebody oh approaching other cultures like, hey, this is about to go down. You should shelter. Because love is still uh, at the root Josh, of not life. on camera, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't Odin idol? Hey, just just oh, think oh, about this. That's what it is. Odin, uh -huh. <laughs> Odin, Odin is one-eyed and hooded. Okay? I just oh. want to say that. I just want to put that out there. Odin is one-eyed and hooded. He is kind of a dick. But that was the point I was trying to make. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no, but what uh, I think it's uh, interesting. Like we're talking about uh, masculine, feminine, uh, burdock. I'll, I'll be coming to you in a minute. Um, I've heard on the um, the occult rejects podcast, like they are um, they are very knowledgeable uh, in the uh, like in everything occult and whatever. But that what's uh, going on now is a overbearing motherly feminine energy because you know we have to protect everyone and like we know what's what's best for you and we'll look look over you and decides what's um what's best for for you and your friends and your family and whatever like that's a very uh, on any state that yeah, same thing but taken to the the, the absolute max that that fits into the fourth turning cycle like the the time of our great grandfathers and grandfathers was around world war ii right they had to plow fields they had to you know walk uphill both ways to school and all those stories yeah. um they they did they had hard you know what i mean and then the wars were fought to buy us a cycle of freedom now we've had our what hundred years basically you know not quite a hundred years but i mean we're coming up on a hundred years of 70 years of good time you know what i mean 60 to 70 years of just Cl close to 80 and even. comfort close to 80 you know years, like we so, yeah we've we've uh demasculate we've demasculated the entire population by a lack of need for masculine things and we sent all the men and all the, the the boys, basically, like everybody from 18 or, you know, if you're strong enough to hold a gun, you know, go fight in the war. Mm -hmm. We sent them all to the slaughterhouse. So, of course, there's yeah. going to be nobody but, uh, but women left or at least like a whole lot of women left uh, in compared to the men. So, of course, then the, uh, the more feminine motherly nanny in the energy is going to take over because, you know, it's just, it's very much skewed. Mm -hmm. But um, it's, a, uh, it's a, it's a balance. And even in the coming of Ragnarok, one rooster crows and brings the giants, one rooster crows and brings the evil. And then the last rooster crows and summons the gods and they all meet at the battlefield. Yeah. You know, and, and, and I, the branch just said something fascinating. You know, he, he denied Jesus and the rooster crows. You know what I mean? And he heard it three times. Was it the same rooster crowing three times or was there three different roosters crowing? I was wondering that after you said that because it doesn't make the distinction <laughs> that you're saying there's three it, different roosters. So it made me it wonder. Clicked, it clicked in, in, Ragn in the telling of Ragnarok in, verse, in stanzas uh, 41, 42, 43, 44, it tells the, the the roosters, it explains their color and everything, but it just says that each one crows and brings this, and then this one crows and brings this. So the last one is on the shores of hell. 
Mm. And it's the rust red rooster, the blood red. There's that corresponds with like the horses of Apocalypse too, like kind of similarly. Rachel has her mm. hand up. Yeah, but so just uh, really quick with the roosters. Um, I do want to draw this parallel. I'm glad you brought it back to this because you know, right now we have a lot of content and encouragement for people to discover their Christ-like nature, regardless of what your background or beliefs are. You know, this idea that you're God coming back to remembering that you're sourced. Um, yeah, very new age so, idea. Right. So, but it's not, it's not necessarily false. Um, there's, I can find tons of stuff on why, but so with the roosters, I like this parallel that just came to mind, but you know, it might have been the same rooster crowing, but it was three different people asking Peter, you know, hey, do you know Jesus? Do you know, do you know who this person is? Right. And he's like, no, I don't. So that tells me that you don't know God. Right. You haven't met him. You haven't seen him. You definitely don't see him in yourself. So <laughs> hmm. we have these three roosters that are crowing the end of the world. So one of them is like, here's the destruction. Do you know what God looks like now? Do you know what God looks like now? Do you know what God looks like now? So it's like this buildup. So it's like, I keep hearing different reports of animals being overly aggressive in certain areas, animals coming back to certain areas. So to me, I mean, I might skip ahead and you know say that's Fenrir being unleashed. That's, that's the wild nature coming back. Are you still gonna know your place when nature comes back? Or are you gonna be like, oh no, I have to call on the gods. Or are you going to stand up and be like, yeah, I am the son of Odin. Yes, I am the son of God. Like, first rooster, <laughs> there are three dawns. You got three days to figure this out. <laughs> Rachel, some people never learn. They need, they're waiting on the fourth rooster. They'll never learn on the first two. <laughs> right? <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> 25 roosters later. <laughs> I wanted to chime in on something on, on um, two things before I forget. And, um, and uh, Rachel, you said before, you know, with Odin going down and talking to, oh, who were they talking? The female, they were uh, witches of some kind. Oh, Forgive me. Or they, but the Norns are fates, but the Volva is the Cirrus. Okay. Forgive me. Um, one thing I see in 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 this uh, 3D dimension now is the we have had a good pocket, Joshua, for the last seven years, relatively speaking, on an energetic level. The, um, it's like the dark forces have been trying to make that not happen, that transition to where we work together, the male and the female, you're talking about all this uh, masculine uh, um, symbology, et cetera, and female symbology, they're separate coming together. It's like they're trying to make that not happen. Like they don't want Joshua and I to be friends or you or, or us and Rachel to be friends. You know, they want to disjoint that. that stuff. Literally. Yeah, yeah, like like literally, like we're sitting here at a Zoom call. We're not at a pub, you know. Like, and uh, in that union of so to prepare for, for potential and be um empowered for what is potentially coming now, and then on the last uh previously about the sun because we we're moving on. The sun, again, in this matrix in where I where I am and where I have this uh, avatar right now. I've noticed the sun's changed colors since I've been alive. I've noticed the Schumann resonance the last two years. You can literally measure the, the energy of the ground. It is raising frequency. These are measured with human instruments, right? You see the sky changing, whether it's manipulated or not, uh, you know, whatever you, where, wherever you want to, wherever you are with that per, uh, concept. So we literally see a dimming of the sun now. We see a high frequency. We see the this realm literally raising its frequency now. Now, one thing, um, so it's this realm is changing. So if you're not changing with it, if you're planting your feet, like uh, Rachel was saying, like, nope, it's just like it was 1995 or whatever. You know what I mean? I'm not, I'm not budging. I'm not moving. If you're not raising your frequency, and literally, um, you're going to be in big time trouble. Now, I don't know if the sun being blacked out in real terms is that you know we've heard stories and other things of like an actual black sun like black hole sun blocking it right like almost like an eclipse that doesn't go away you know what i mean i was 
I was trying to yeah. or going to bring up the uh, the black sun because you'll see yeah. that uh, you'll see that symbolism a lot too in the more uh, more and darker least, darker occult uh, circles. Yeah. You know, and, um, and uh, one last thing, and stop. Pl please continue with that train of thought. The last thing is, um, they're actually literally trying to dim, put this haze in film above us, like a canopy. So there's that aspect as well. So just want to throw that. At, please now. No, 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 it's, it's, it's a good one. It's a good one. But yeah, the, the black sun or the, the black hole sun, I, um, I, I've been always, I've always been a big fan of, um, of symbolism and, and symbols. Like that's one of the first things that, um, well, at least got me curious about this world because I was seeing like just really basic, you know, seeing the same hand gestures and seeing the same symbols, like, appear over and over again like pretty much everywhere and you know you know the whole the whole oh illuminati confirmed meme and whatever but you know that i mean i believe it was uh it's, it's one of my favorite quotes confucius who said that uh this world is ruled by signs and symbols um or run by signs and symbols not rules nor laws and that's that's very much true so i've been uh and the black sun or the black hole sun's always been a um one of my favorite symbols uh especially after i you know found my, found my path in uh north germanic paganism you'll, you'll see it appear a lot and also in uh the more right-wing circles you'll uh, you'll find it a lot have you have you looked at what you have is doing so, sorry, Josh, can I hear you? There okay. is literally a group right now that <laughs> everybody's heard of. But this, this one particular uh, person has this idea that they want to send up sales to block, go, block the sun out. And uh, he actually announced his plan. And Josh. so basically put the science out there, said we can send this. Am I breaking up? Yeah, pretty bad. Um, you, like try, try and, uh, and reset your connection. Hold on, I'll, I'll, try, I'll try and weave a bit further on the, uh, on the black sun, on the black hole sun, because I've been um, like, of course, the first thing that people associated with, unfortunately, is um, Hitler and his... Uh, his Nazi empire, especially the more occult side of the um, of the SS and uh, the famous castle where they have the uh, the black sun or the black hole sun like uh, over the entire floor where um, Himmler and his his cronies, his crew uh, supposedly made all the uh, well made the magic happen quite literally. Um, and Apparently, from what I have, what I've read, what I've heard, um, it's not a pagan symbol and not related to the uh, Tikolovrat, for example. But like, it's actually a um, a occult symbol. It's it's the it's literally the, the the black sun. So you have like the the gold or golden sun. You know the the sun that like gives us light gives this um this physical earth and all the beings on it gives it light and then you have the the black sun or the black hole sun and i mean black holes are famous for just sucking everything up including light so um i'm really trying to do some more research on that read on it a uh, a bit further well, because also... I, I think it's interesting that you have those uh those opposites again even in yeah. sun symbolism and it it depends on what your cosmology is is does this is there a actual object blocking the sun or is it like, like a lamp that just kind of starts no. turning part of its light it depends on your co cosmology but it um it doesn't necessarily matter if it's going to get blocked out it's like dude you know it's Do like, i have audio you know, yeah, you're good now, bro. Okay. All right. Very now, very now very on that blocking out of the sun, there is literally a group right now that is uh, attempting to put up a sail to block the sun's rays out 
And if they get this object of just the right size at just the right spot between us and the sun, they can expand this sail and block out X percentage of the sun's rays, right? Now, the this Simpsons is the is same a documentary. <laughs> this is the same group that is telling us to convert to solar power. So yeah. I'm just putting that out there, dude, that, that there's a lot of uh, very occult things that are working against us. There's a lot of confusion. It's almost like there is a war on, on the mind right now, right? And it's not just <laughs> on one group. It's on the general citizenry. And it brings a confusion before Ragnarok. There is a moral break, right? And now, disconnect. if you can break the family and the church ties you have that moral break. Yeah. Yeah, uh, totally. Yeah, the decadence is incredible. Um, breaking that families. The last two years, you the disjoining of all your people, family, best friends, lifelong friends. You go, we don't connect anymore. Family, we don't connect anymore. And I've been saying the last two years, um, yes, some of that is manipulated, but some of it I think is totally natural where you have high free, you have people saying where they are. You have high frequency beings just naturally, and then here we are vibing with each other. So and some of that's natural, some of that's a little manipulated. But yeah, you don't have your trot, your um, you know, your nuclear family tribe, your community. But as they take certain people away, I think they bring new people. That's why I'm here with you guys. <laughs> you yeah. Know what I mean? Now, as as the age old saying goes, when one when one door closes, another one opens. I mean, just that's exactly means that you it. have that you have bad locks in a big draft. But listen, I, I I had the weirdest experience. I was in the hospital with pancreatitis, dude. I and it was one of the first times I had gotten a severe acute case of it. I was at odds with myself at the time because I had been to the point with my health where I had lost one job. I was in a point of despair. You know what I mean? My, the, my coworkers were my community. You know what I mean? And that, that just all fell apart at one time as I'm laying in the hospital, I'm in my phone and I roll through telegram and find this golden idea, this, this tribe, this group of people that support each other, that had similar spiritual beliefs. And even if they didn't have similar spiritual beliefs, they could talk about it civilly. They had similar social beliefs, similar structures. And we are here in the tribe of the great horn pagans now. Yeah. I think the vibrations tune when we need them to, doorways open for us. And we are all basically stumbling through this, looking around at weird signs going, something's going to happen. But in the same effect, that people have been programmed to not resist for so long. To, to as when we were kids, you know, a lot of us were in that sit down and shut up. Children are to be seen, not to be heard. You know what I mean? Leave, leave the house, come back at sunset. What if, if you need a drink, drink it out of the hose kind of mentality. We don't have that anymore. People are bubble wrapped. We've lived in an isolated society for coming on 30 years since the internet age happened. This weird movement of amoral lawsuits of pure idiocy, like people spilling hot coffee on themselves and then suing the company that sold it to them. <laughs> I mean... And there's to... just this decline in society's expectation of itself. And in that, nobody is responsible for their society anymore, right? We have set up government programs to appease people in so many ways that if it ever came to an end, 90% of people would literally starve to death in a matter of two months. And that's what we have to build back up is a society of knowledgeable people that are willing to be self-sufficient a little bit more than the rest of society to give a little care to their community and their fellow man and to find a clan and kin and build with them towards something positive not a militia to be destructive 
or to go out and riot, but a group of people to focus on positive things, survival, spiritual growth, spiritual enlightenment, mental knowledge, gaining just aspects of life that we have lost. Yeah. Uh, before I go over to uh, Rachel and Chris real quick, uh, I, ju I just uh, a thing popped into my mind uh, when you when you uh, talked about those government projects, you know, trying to make everybody equal and whatever. The um, what was it the uh, Pixar Pixar movie, The Incredibles, uh, the the bad guy syndrome, I I believe his name was. He um like he wanted to give everybody superpowers because like if everybody is special no one is or is if everybody is super then no one is and that just it, it just popped into my mind when you said that you know we're trying so hard to make everybody equal and everybody the same but like we'll not never... equal anymore it's equity oh yeah, everybody yeah, yeah. have the same equity which doesn't make sense socially so they're trying to create a social system for something that is no social function other than basically a lead weight around the neck of society. Yeah, but uh, Rachel, you have something on this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it, it all ties in really, really well together. Um, you know, it's, it is this graying out of things. You know, they talk about gray aliens. I think that's really... Alien meaning just foreign invader. Let's roll that. Get you know weird things out of your head for just a second. They could be weird. I'm open to that. But a gray invader is going to try to make you the same. It's going to try to make you the same as everybody else. That's what gray is, right? When you gray something out, you make it all the same. And you know, to me, it it seems like a lot of these. In movies and all this stuff, there's all this, this idea of raising the Dark Lord, okay? Think about raising the Dark Lord. What does that even mean? It's not like it's gone. It's not like he's, you know, that's an illusion. But think about raising your vibration. Because even the dark has to evolve too. Even the dark evolves. Even the dark can grow. That's, you know, I think that's why we're seeing the Black Sun come back out. You know, whether it's an actual literal figure, maybe it's a black hole. Think about the dark and the deep. The only cosmology I've come in reading that anything about that is Gaul, is the French Celts. And they, they knew themselves to be the sons of the dark. And the dark wasn't evil, wicked badness. That's not what dark meant. That It meant literal. Like we're, we came from the earth. We came from the darkness. We came from that. Yeah, they recognize themselves as coming from Ganunga Gap. You know, other cultures have these words. Yeah, they're like we we know that's where we're from. That's our home. So you know, I think we're seeing that resurgence because there does need to be that that balance and that interplay. And you know, a lot of um, you know you you'll hear me say it a lot because I, I walk the middle path because I believe we are meant to be the middle path. And you will have people who walk in the middle path prefer more light. Or they prefer more dark and i think that's natural but what that's... all of these entities try to do is force you to choose they yeah. get you into a mode where they force you to choose a polarity rather than letting synergy occur <laughs> yeah no, so that's, the, the middle you know, path i mean i i explained in a uh, like just a short podcast that I uh, that I did by myself that's literally where the uh, or part of the name of the of the tribe comes from you know the gray horn gray because uh, personally I've always neutrality uh, yeah well no not necessarily neutrality but more I like I will I for the longest time at least I'm kind of turning more towards the light now thanks to a lot uh, thanks to Keely as well but always kind of walks the uh, the fine line in between uh, darkness and light. So I always considered myself kind of gray because, you know, I can like function in the dark and survive in the dark and I can do some light work, just not like one or the other. Like it's, it's both. So the middle path, you know, the gray path. I, I look at that like, uh, have you ever seen a sound line, a sound wave, 
right? The vibration up and down from the center line, right? Yeah. And I feel like our human vibrations have been getting to be a narrower and narrower band of the wave, right? We used to walk with our feet wider, a little more into the light, a little more into the dark, but we, we attempted to stay out of conflict on either side. You know what I mean? Not necessarily neutral, but peaceful. You know what I mean? It, it is a goal to, to be peaceful when possible, right? Yeah. Nobody wants to war all the time or war unnecessarily. You know what I mean? N nobody wants to laze about all the time because that creates absolute depression, right? We have to have some type of, some type of balance to it. Yeah. And I think humanity's vibration it, like he said earlier with the Schumann residence, I think that is picking up again. And if you look at Game of Thrones, okay, the song of ice and fire, right? It's, it's the tale of balance, but all of the sudden, when, when the balance needs to be restored, magic starts to come back out. We're starting to widen that vibratory path on a need, right? Yeah. We, we need more stability so we act more aggressively in one direction or another to bring that stability back, to balance the scales again. That's a good way to, like tears yeah. rune, okay? I, I look at tears rune, the Tiwaz rune, like a, I know it is not a scale of balance, right? But you look at it as, as a line in the middle and so, you uh, have- the, Yeah, this, this guy right here. In my yes. Front. Yes. Yes. That guy, the, 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 the rune on his head. Yeah. It, it's, it's an arrow facing upward with a, a balance coming off to each side. Right. Uh, you can look at it as a spearhead or many different things. And it, it's interpreted in different faces to represent different things. Right. Justice, a guiding star, but it, it, it's usually some form of balance or guidance. A guiding to star. reset the system. Yeah, uh, Chris, you you have something on this. I I have a couple a uh, couple of weaves myself to a couple ideas, but uh, you've had your hand up for a while. So, uh, what do you uh, what do you got to say on this? Um, it's funny bring like bring up the shoe and resonance again because you, uh, Chris, you uh, you brought that up in the uh, in the last one. You had some uh, some good weaves, yeah. some good thoughts on that. Yes, I'm very interested in the Shuman resonance. That's why I went in my um, music endeavors, it's literally called the Shaman resonance because it's a play on the Shuman resonance. Um, yeah, I brought that last time. And um, what, what I wanted to, I can kind of tie that into what I wanted to bring up now. Um, you know, we was talking about um, earlier the the separation of of family, um, and I um I've been thinking about that lately about about the the breakdown of of the family unit, which also means the breakdown of the family tree because. If you're not connecting with your mother or father, then you're not connecting with that that side of your whole family. You're, that's your closest connection to a, many other branches of the tree. So, if you're what, simply what? just not connecting with them, then you're not connecting with anything that you, um, you know, inherited from from that side of the your family tree. Um, and it made me um, think because you know I'm, I'm sitting out here in, in a, a storm, and it made me think of you know all. I'm sure we've all seen pictures or seen a person um, trees that have been struck by lightning. You know, we're talking about Ragnarok and Thor. Um, so it, 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 it made me, and then I started 
you know, you, you look at the lightning bolt and it, it kind of does look like a root, right? The, so it's, again, just like how our veins looks like roots. You know, um, the other day, um, Rachel and I was talking about, you know, the, the analogy that we are all trees, even our auric fields are like tree veins. Um, and I think um, that's one of the reasons why, um, you know, we're so scared of, um, or they're making us so scared of the deforestation of of our that like oh you know we need to plant a tree because they're the because we are picking up on that and we're like oh we need to be more rooted we need we need to be more connected I think that goes back to Root. Um, what Rachel was talking about about um, raising the dark lord you know raising the vibration you know the flame sets in, in darkness so your eternal spark what you know what makes you you um sets in darkness so if you are are raising your vibrations and then you're also raising um the the, the darkness that you are you know being illuminated in um so I just kind of wanted to throw all that out there a little bit. Yeah, let me, may I chime in real quick? Um, Absolutely. Yeah, we're electrical beings. And some when, when it comes to other entities that we can't see, especially when we're talking about these mythologies, and there's a potential for when you raise your frequency so high that you become invisible to low frequency beings. So some of this may explain um, these like, otherworldly entities that bring knowledge you know um that we hear maybe they are simply because everything exists in this realm in my opinion and high frequency beings you can um, they're almost invisible and they are uh throughout the um all the texts you know they bring knowledge right and they're seen as and they are sometimes demonized in certain um uh sects because on purpose and so when you when when you are raising your if the realm is raising its vibration you raise your vibration you may hey guys you might become invisible to low low frequency beings man you know what i mean and then you try and share knowledge you know go ahead josh now that brings us right into the the 46th and 47 stanzas of uh the voluspa right yeah. and and 46 uh, fast move the sons of Mim, and fate is heard in the note of the Gallahorn. Loud blows Heimdall, the horn is aloft. In fear quake all who on hell roads are. Number 47, Yggdrasil shakes and shiver on high. The ancient limbs and the giant is loose. To the head of Mim does Odin give heed, but the kinsmen of Surt shall slay him soon. All right. You have a horn blowing and Yggdrasil shaking, right? A vibration, right? Humanity, Yggdrasil is our, our family trees. Yggdrasil is so much more than just a doorway, a, a portal and a, a road between realms. Yggdrasil is our family trees. Yggdrasil is the knowledge of past, present, and future. There is a, a, a trinity built within it, right? You have the upper branches of Yggdrasil. That is the, the, the future branches of your family tree and the upper realms, right? You have the base of Yggdrasil. That is you and your spouse's branch of the family tree, right? And your children diverge from there. And then before you, you have your ancestors down in the roots, right? And Yggdrasil shakes, all of it shakes, right? The very vibration of our ancestral blood, right? It will wake something up in us. Now, we will be able to see these beings coming from other realms when this sonic horn is blown and this doorway is opened. 
right? It all runs back to vibration. The crowing of a rooster, the blowing of a horn, it is all vibration. The shaking of Yggdrasil, shaking is a vibration, right? Fear, fear is the high frequency vibration, right? Fear is caused by ultra high frequency vibrations, FM, 5G, the Schumann residence perhaps, right? And in waking that back up in us, I think is where we are right now. I think that is the stage of Ragnarok, the stage in this recurring cycle that we are seeing right now. It stands as 46 and 47. We are seeing Yggdrasil shake. And even going back a bit to um, like the, the phallic shapes and whatever, you know, talking about a a tree and seeds, like there are um, multiple ways to interpret that, you know, like as a, as a man, just putting it very bluntly, you spread the seed with your, well, your tree or your, your branch, your you root. know, and yeah, basically. And like you, you plant it in what, I, I hope is like fertile soil so that you can grow anew so that you can grow new life. You know, it, it's like just a very basic principle of as above, so below, as within, so without. Like so many people talk about like humans and nature. No, 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 no. guys, we are nature. We are part of nature. No. Like I, I have like so many pictures on my, my phone, can I my share computer. A, uh, etymology, can I share a quick etymology word? I'll make it quick. Yeah, no, please um, do. And something interesting that's been going around uh, that I love is the box saga, especially with our etymology uh, aspect. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, love it. I, I, uh, I sperma is like their word for sperm. I, the son, per, the male, the perma father, the father, and ma, the mom, the mother. So literally in their word is that pair, the parents, is literally the I word. I see ma. Yeah. It's beautiful how that's, Yeah, exactly. Yeah, man. It's beautiful how... Um, sorry, I was just tagging what you were saying, Stein. Um, thought it was relevant. Yeah, no, the, just... I, I love that, you know, wordplay, word magic. It's, it's, uh, it's a real thing. And the box saga is very like very interesting i uh, i definitely want to go into that more as soon as we um as we finished doesn't with, bach uh, mean, with... doesn't bach mean goat and uh, yeah it does the the bach the bach uh, especially in uh like we we use it in dutch for example uh it's a uh, it's a male goat and uh, uh you uh branch you brought up some stuff that you shared with me about um yeah there you go Thanks. about heimdall um, yeah it actually in the bible when it talks about blacking out the sun it does talk about it being like goat sackcloth specifically so if you're familiar with a goat hide i'm not <laughs> but i uh, think of a black colored goat hide that would be like they're, draped over the sun that's kind of how they're, they're characterized thick skin it. yeah a, a very opaque yeah, that's the Gallag Yallerhorn. Yallerhorn. The Yallerhorn. The Gallerhorn. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to uh, I'm going to stop sharing for a moment, see if I can share so is that just like, the uh, just the post. Is that like one of the uh, roosters? Or you know what I mean? Like is that in addition to the roosters or is that like that is an addition. That's and Heimdall blows the horn after the crowing of the three roosters and when he blows the horn the battle commences that's okay, so it's kind like of the like with, pistol for the race yes ex exactly it that's the that's the war horn the yeah, yellow there's horn. israfil that's the uh semitic equivalent he blows it yeah the jewish blow. the jewish religion has some sort of horn they blow with like hey it's time to go to Yes, the that's a shofar. That's blown at the first a light of each, each moon. Yeah, it's a ram's horn. Okay, I'm uh, and two witnesses blow a one horn apiece. 
to signify the first light of the moon. So that's how they start their calendar each month. This is so much more interesting than school. They, they should have this. This I would love this. this oh man, I'm telling you, dude. Yeah. Well, well that's I mean, not the job of school. This, they they want to. They, they're just to prepare machines. you for the factories and the basic work that you're supposed to do when you come out of it. Um, I mean, look at this. Just this one little fact of this is supposed to be new knowledge to us. The the sperm and the egg and all of that. But there are Vedic temples in India that are thousands of years old that have depictions of not only sperm, eggs, the contraception, and then the, the mitosis, but they also have artificial wombs depicted. And this is not just isolated to India. There's also insinuation of artificial wombs in other culture, but it is... It's a sign that not only Ragnarok is a cyclic thing, but it appears that there are cyclic enlightenment ages with knowledge, right? Like thousands of years ago, we had this knowledge that disaster happens, we lose it. How did we lose it when it's still on the side wall of these buildings? Well, because the people that spoke that language to interpret it are now gone. Now we have to wait a couple thousand years for everybody well, to come back together, start a new internet up, communicate with each other and say, hey, we rediscovered this thing. This writing is on the wall. It's been there for thousands of years. The writing is literally on the wall. So, yeah. So let me ask you this, Joshua. Um, the Ragnarok is, is telling what's to come, but it, what about that past you're talking about, like a cataclysmic event where those buildings are still there and those people you're talking about are gone? So was there a? Uh, did Ragnarok already happen? Maybe this is one. Of, this maybe this is like the second or third crow. You know, we've already we're in the, maybe when the, we're in the fourth like, or fifth cycle. Okay, so right? we're in the that's now. What you mean that fourth turning thing? Uh, that that is concept. that is more literal. That's literal in two senses. But yes, the fourth turning is is literal for more than one reason. Um, Dude, but maybe I think, the crow. Like like Rachel mentioned, we didn't learn the first few times. Maybe it's already blown a couple times, and now we're waiting on that last crow uh, All right. signal. Oh, that's that's, a good that's one. where I'm at now, right? Before humans could communicate this coming danger to each other before, the Tower of Babylon was struck down. Mankind was scattered, confused, tongue, you know, separated the whole nine yards, right? So we couldn't communicate with each other. Hey, we see this thing coming. You need to save everybody, get them to high ground, da da da, right? But now we're in an age where we have very versatile information, able to travel over lines and airwaves. And we have utilized it in such a way that now we can no longer be censored. Now they can no longer quell the voices they don't want to hear and promote the ones they do because now we have two bubbles of it. Now we have two spheres of it. You know what I mean? We have a new enlightenment in a way that if something was to happen now, we can communicate with each other and say, hey, they're, they're overthrowing in uh, Sweden right now. They're, they're doing whatever, you know. We can communicate that as to where back in the day, it took a messenger traveling on horseback and then a boat or sending a carrier pigeon or a raven you know what I mean? To carry that message. Now, now we can literally take a picture, press a button, and somebody on the other side of the planet knows exactly what's happening over here in America or Sweden or Germany or Holland, right? So we have that advantage. We have the ability to build a society that is aware of the coming issue, whatever you want to call it, right? We can all feel tension rising. We can yeah. all feel these vibrations picking up, right? And if you can we feel the all... vibrations, at least look around you and you can see tension is rising. Tension is at a all time high, like it clashes, violent clashes are becoming a daily thing. We're being told this thing, but we're seeing this thing and something's not right. So a lot of us are like, you know what, let me look that up. But then you have the other half, like I said, they're creating two bubbles. The other half, they go to one source, they look it up and go, oh, well, there's the truth right there, right? 
and they could be being fed an absolute line or they could be given the truth and they would never know the difference because they're programmed to not look it up, to not research it, to so just also, trust. My friend, I, I apologize for, for- No, 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 it's okay. The, um, By all means, we're in a discussion. Break through when you feel you have to say uh, something, man. And please do, I know because the Zoom, I'm trying talking. to, the Zoom thing, you know, <laughs> right. I'm trying to be, trying to navigate the media, the medium. I think media has got some mythology as, as well, but then you have the ether, aspect and they are really trying to control that message joshua yes we can talk for now uh unless they censor us because they want to control this gnosis that we're sharing all across the land on the ether net decentralization right? decentralization is where it's at so you got we're all going to be outlaws just to have a regular old conversation you know you, you know what i'm saying <laughs> so they want to control that ether they want to control they mm -hmm. They want to literally censor this gnosis, this combo. And it's not even that it's dangerous, but really we're just talking. I mean, we're just talking about I'm just talking, man. But the, the fact remains that the powers that should not be, the lizard class, um, want to not allow these type of conversations to happen, even in person. That's where that whole uh, you know, tell talk uh tell on people snitch or what I, I you know whatever that is yeah, yeah 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 so they want to not we don't they don't want us to grow and share this gnosis hey joshua this is what i think you go hey cool this is what i think and we don't have to agree who cares but you gotta it's know the I'm finding doing. common ground that they want to disrupt it's the actual bonding of the community and the family and the the gods they they want to separate the trinity they, they need to break every aspect of the triangle in order to weaken us. You're not wrong, but I am going to throw out there that part of alchemy is breaking apart. And something that does need to be broken apart is and eating bonding. from the tree, eating from the tree of good and evil, the knowledge of good and evil. Good and evil exist, okay? It's the knowledge. It's that hyper-focus on good and evil that needs to die. Because you can be like God, you can eat from the tree of life, knowing all of that, but being focused on life, you can know about good and evil, but that's what we're in right now. So when we're looking at things like the Tower of Babel, who said that was a bad thing, right? That is centralized everything. That's what that represents. It's that coming together. And then there's like that party. breaking apart. That's, it's, yeah, it's I, like, it's not necessarily an evil thing. It can be. I look at it more it like be. the internet. Sure. Yeah, and I, I could totally you, you could see say that, that something that unites us. And yeah, you could say that the great. internet is the the more modern day Tower of Babel. You know, oh, all totally. races, religions, and they're languages. Kind of now. Dude, see, Rachel, what do you think about duality? Yeah. That's, what do you think about duality? That's the this thing I think about. I think about that breaking apart. That's because in the back of my mind, like I have like. I've been camping all my childhood. Like that doesn't mean I'm aced it or anything. Like I could still stand to polish up some survival skills, but that's in the back of my mind. If the internet goes out, if all your vegan friends run out of their substitutes, what are you going to live on? So the thing is, is not to put your hope and your faith into this one thing. The only source that you have is source. So it's like, yeah, if the internet breaks, there goes all our communication, right? There goes our gnosis and we're all distressed and we're all upset. It's like, but what do you have? This is Taurus. This is, what do you have? When they're talking about the bull and they're doing bull rituals, it's about what you have. This is Fehu. Oh, the, com the, the Commonwealth Games, the opening of the Commonwealth Games. Yeah, I thought that Games. was cool as heck, but I could see the wokeness in there. Dude, that's, that's, that was such ball worship. Like that was such a ball ritual. It's, but it's, it's also, insane. It's, it's like it's, sacred cow. Like the sacred cow yeah. is in so many mythologies. And then I was just thinking the other day about um, how in the original, the original, original tarot before Rider Waite, the strength card and the justice card were swapped. So hmm. then I was thinking about the Hierophant being a sign for Taurus. Okay, so the only way to tame the wild beast in us, the only justice that can prevail, we're getting closer and closer to Fenrir right now, you know, the only justice is to make peace and have a good relationship with that bull. Now, the darker side of things is used to doing that through sacrifice, right? Which is dark and it's, 
I'm sorry, blase and so past tense. Like, can we get over this type of sacrifice? Yeah. Um, that's very Southern. That's very polarity. That's very um, Jacob's line and not Esau's line from what I'm seeing. So, yeah. you know, and, and that's the trick is Fenrir and Tyr. You know, the only reason those two had bad blood is because Tyr didn't stand up for Fenrir. Thank you, Balderson, for pointing that out. I'm like, you know what? That's a good point. He raised him. He fed him. And then when Odin was like, I'm too scared, Tyr's like, okay, we'll bind him. You know, he didn't say, hey, I've been raising it. I've been making friends with it. <laughs> so, of course. Yeah, no, good one. And uh, Br Branch, you can you you can um go go further on this and go further on Fenrir but i just wanted to say this like isn't the um the beast of the land in the bible isn't uh isn't he portrayed as some uh as some giant bull and the uh the septum that he had was a symbol of its uh its subjugation to god or something like that i i remember uh faintly that being the case but uh you you know you're more of a christian scholar than i am so hey man you're pretty close uh, i think probably both of them because there's behemoth which i think is the beast of the earth and then there's leviathan that's the beast of the sea and yeah. there is scripture in job i think about uh drawing uh leviathan by the nose so it would imply that you know our creator had subjugated these great beasts in the past and for some reason or another decided to keep them around well i guess ragnarok was the why <laughs> and uh wow. then some others were locked away for judgment at another time that they're not even permitted to be a part of things so it's just kind of interesting to analyze that but um but fenrir yeah so in the next stanza that josh was reading from it looked like it mentions wolves and so i was wondering if that was related to fenrir because we had just seen he's that now there's there's debate on whether that is the same wolf or not and it is not there's very oh, okay. different texts gorm is the hellhound he's the literal hellhound um fenrir is loki's offspring right but you were just talking about the leviathan and the beast of the land what was that one called Behemoth. Behemoth, okay. Which is um, a pretty damn good and Jormungandr. Black metal band. <laughs> do, you, do you see the balance there? Behemoth yeah, yeah, exactly. and Leviathan, Fenrir, no. and Jormungandr. No, uh, the beast think, of the land, the beast uh, of the sea. I think Leviathan yeah. would be more uh, more in tune with uh, with with Jormungandr because they are the uh, the beasts of the beasts of, of the, the sea. sea and Fenrir with um, uh, the other one. He just said it again. Behemoth. Behemoth. <laughs> behemoth. Yeah, behemoth. You, you also have the uh, the beast of the sky, right? Or the beast beast of air. It never talks about one specifically, but you do see that come up in some other cultures. Yeah. I mean, it would make sense. Wouldn't that have since... been Yahweh himself? The beast well, of the sky would have been Yahweh, the dragon. You could you could say that. Some people like to call him that. But I've seen now, it, but I, there, I don't personally so... believe it. But I think it's because it's interesting. The dragon in Revelation gives his power to the lamb, which is the beast of the earth. So again, that it's like the behemoth thing kind of comes up again. Yeah, uh, and I'm, the but, lamb I'm... speaks. The lamb speaks like a dragon. So he's got like a dragon tongue, but a lamb. <laughs> so there's that. Yeah, but you you have the uh, like the Holy Trinity, so you know the the good guy Trinity of the the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, and then you have the uh, the Behemoth, the Leviathan, and there then you think that there has to be a uh, a third one as well, because you know like Trinities, we're well, talking Trinities, and we're Loki, talking duality, Loki birth, equality. Loki birthed the other two giant beasts, so I'm just saying yeah. maybe there is a trinity there. Yeah, now, Loki, can we, Loki did. He, he, did. he is frame, the father of the two. Yeah, can we frame some things here? Because you mentioned before the stream began recording that Loki leads the dishonorable dead, and then who was it? Odin leads the others. Leads then? The, the army of Valhalla. The honorable dead. Yeah. Okay. And one more thing is that when we're talking about the Tower of Babel, um, 
what really made it evil, I think, was the intention behind it because they they were building it to go and overthrow. I guess in this case, we could say the Aesir. The, they were building a, a tower high. to the heavens. Yeah, to I, I thought them. that was. I thought that was so that all men could communicate in the same tongue. Well, they were able to do that at that point, but they were building that tower to try and war with God, though. So that part's okay. kind of sometimes not emphasized. But so that was the... Let's see. Um, I think building yeah. a tower would be transhumanism because we should all be able yeah, to exactly. communicate telepathically. <laughs> Well, and that's well, where we got the. Are you one hundred percent sure we can't? I never said that. I mean, <laughs> I'm sure we can. can. Oh, I'm sure I'm we can. Right now. <laughs> how many? I just want to say this: How many times? And this has happened in our, in just in the tribe, over a hundred times. Stein and I will post exactly the same thing at exactly the same time. Yeah, or literally been. be saying <laughs> oh, yeah. exactly yeah. the same thing, but in a slightly different verbiage. Yeah, we can. So shut this Zoom call down, and we're all just it's just telling. <laughs> right? That works. <laughs> that works for <laughs> us, but the people that want to watch us aren't going to be able to tune in. If you know telepathy, you don't need notifications. Otherwise, you're going to need to put <laughs> yeah, notifications just, on. Yeah, just you know, just mute it here. You'll hear the rest telepathically. <laughs> <laughs> this what, is what do you guys think when you were again. talking trans? What do you think about when you see these like figures, Baphomet or whoever? guy girl etc i know it has negative connotations but i've also heard argue or you know um claims that it's not negative it's just everything mixed into one as opposed to right that may or may not be bad or good it's just like good and bad everything male female just mixed into this thing and yes in in my world and maybe our world it's seen as um negative because some of these like really low vibrational people seem to be super into it what do you what do you guys think about those type of symbologies I think it's an attempt to, to describe the all. It's an artistic attempt. Um, confuses people. I'm starting to lean that way, Rachel. Huh? Yeah, I'm starting to lean that way. I used to think evil, uh, bad. That's a bad, but I'm right. starting to lean that way. That's what I'm saying about the evil and the good paradigm. It, it, that's what's toxic. I mean, you can recognize when something is truly evil and when something is truly good. But to constantly label and judge something, that's unhealthy. Um, you know, because you can see how it plays out. That's when you know. I'm so tired but of we know that we know the really and, like you know. we know the real I'm just gonna call them the lizards. We know they use that <laughs> that symbology as like really not cool, like they're not cool, right? Like so they use well, that symbology in a in a un in an uncool way. Sorry. I mean it's their negative intent. To, Yes, their well, intentions are bad. Are are bad to use dualistic thinking. I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to be like all dual, duality right here, but yeah. Oh, I get it. Um, I think it's, it's tr what they're trying to do is raise the vibration of the dark lord. You know, it's it's trying to raise the darkness. They're trying to make it on par with the light. You know, here's what when the light shines on darkness, here's what you see. You know. And so that's the image that they're coming up with to say it's it's all gravy. We are the same, um, but it's not always successful because it's not really operating with the knowledge of the light. It's not operating with knowledge of the middle path. It's not really synergistic because if you understand what the darkness is, you don't need an, a representation of the darkness. You don't you don't need to do that. You yourself are the expression of both, so that's all the uh, that's all the representation you need, really. And to yeah, commemorate it, a god or an an ancient ancestor, that's who the gods are. Mythology is a time frame; it's not made up. It's not look at the etymology; it's a time frame. So Rachel, you know, it's it's very different to iconography. You know, to iconicize anything. Um, Rachel, I want to ask you a, a honest question. Um, I've heard mostly from males when I ask this question, but I want to hear your take. <clears throat> you know, being high vibe, et cetera, I don't really attract uh, violence, but if there is violence in those who wish to use force against my community, you know, the enemy at the gates, I can't sit and just meditate it away while they're trying to destroy mm -hmm. my grandma and stuff and grandkids. 
So mm -hmm. there is a, what do you think about that going, Hey guys, you know, we're, you're going to have a pro I'm go I'm not going to sit here in the Lotus stance while you destroy everything around me. I'm going to have to like do actual um, you, physical. At what this point is do we come Joshua talks proactive. about a lot? You know, yeah, this is, I mean, Josh. And I don't mean in a tough this. guy way, Rachel, you know what I mean. No, I'm no, I know what you mean. <laughs> yeah, no, I know what you mean. I know what you mean. Um, how long can we be idle? Right. How long can you be, how long can you be an idol? Because that's what that is. You're, you're being still, you're being an icon. You're being that, <laughs> you know, a fixed point in time. So, you know, of course, you know, this is, this is why I've started to really, you know, challenge people who talk about ascension. Um, it's not about raising our vibration. That's ridiculous. It's about expanding our vibration. If you look at a Taurus field, you don't, it doesn't just go up and down, it goes all around. So it's about being bigger. So in conflict, I've been in some crazy situations, man. And I am, you would meet me and you'd be like, oh, you're so tiny. I'm like, no, I'm not, I'm, I'm big. And that's, but that's the thing. I can tell you from experience in certain situations, you can be bigger than those vibrations you can drown them out you don't have to but things do get you know things can get violent things can get very physical in that case it is always all right to defend yourself it's proper to defend yourself that's exactly what the masculine and but feminine are I, doing. Valkyrie. and we are talking I, viking style this is a viking style <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, absolutely but I, I think his question is more of like when do we look at what the attack that's already happening to us? When do you, we look at that and go, okay, go, this is how we put our foot down and when? That from is from a, a female perspective. From a healthy, from a healthy perspective, it's as soon as you choose to pick up the sword. It's as soon as you choose to say enough is enough. You don't need someone yeah. to tell you go. If you're waiting, if you're on, if you're a dog on a leash and you are waiting for that release, you've already lost. You know, well, I can tell you, I, first of all, Rachel, I love your work verbiage on expanding. I, I, I know I say high vibe, but also what I, I real I do love, I like the expanding um, aspect. As, the the you know, expanding that's universe. Fit, yeah, for expanding yeah, that's universe. Fit, uh, that's how we fit giants and dragons. Maybe it expands. Uh, but yeah, when it comes to, for me personally, uh, I like utility information. I do not participate in certain things. I literally say no, and I do train in certain aspects for physical, and I also don't feed the beast as far as my attention. I try and, you know, I'm half a hippie. I'm like a, I'm like a hippie, hippie samurai. You know what I mean? Where, you know what I balance. mean? But balance. But yeah, um, and I and my my kids, I have kids as well, and they're warriors as well. Literally, we train Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, etc. Nice. And we're very uh, yeah, Jiu Jitsu we're, practitioner. You know, yeah, we know we 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 uh grapple all the time. I let the twenty one year old know that the, this old lion still got still got some teeth left in him, man. I still, <laughs> but uh, but we are um, yes. I'm not gonna storm. I'm not gonna be a lone wolf. And, and, and the thing is, I, I where Joshua is and where Rachel is, it's like I see those enemies. They're playing their paper tiger ga uh, game, and they'll send their little force here but it's like i'm not storming any castles i'm not going and i'm not lone wolfing anything i'm definitely going to hold my ground there's a balance in the whole sun Tzu kind of thing um i find it more of a resistance like decentralized resistance type of thing with high-minded beings and just stay out okay first of all first when the lemmings are running off the cliff first of all get out of their way let like you're not gonna. You you don't want to get ran. Let all right. Have fun running off the cliff. And then when it comes to that aspect, I'm telling you, uh, for for Joshua and my, and I don't mean to speak for him, but uh, I'm in waiting and I'm in resistance. I'm in avoid uh certain aspects mode. But um, we we're training. We're working on our expansion of consciousness. We're working on our garden. We're working on our push-ups. We're working on our grounding barefoot, getting the sun, all those things. So the, I appreciate your um I just wanted a female response to that question. Because sometimes like it's such this this no, don't do anything, just be. And I'm like, 
Well, would, I got, dude, I got you're kids. already fighting by by doing those things. You're already fighting because look at what they want you to do. They want you to sit on your ass, have the most unhealthy diet ever, whether that be vegan or fast food or fucking fast food vegan. Yes, that's a thing, believe it or not. Worm burgers. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, they that want you, you to do absolutely nothing and be helpless and just you know, let big brother, let daddy government or mommy government, I guess, you know, the, the overbearing, caring, take care of you, you know, we'll do it for you. But you're taking medicine to your own hands. You know, you're, you're, you're raising your kids as warriors. You're training yourself to be a warrior. You're, you're you know, training your, your mental, your spiritual and your physical strength. So, dude, you're fighting already because just by doing those things, you are fighting against the, well, the system, you know? It might be an attrition thing. I think perhaps it'll be an attr a battle of an attrition and don't become ill and, and um, starving and poor and in, in poor health. And you'll well, probably uh, outlast a lot of- Always be Because a lot of times these negative, these people, these like uh, negative energies, these tyrants or whoever, they'll actually, um, burn themselves out and they'll eat each other. So if you can literally like almost stay completely yeah. out, out of the way. Yeah. Just wait just them out. Wait them out. I don't need your and food. And, and whatever. Yeah. Please look at start. look at the survivors of the last couple apocalypses. And we've gotten into this in in uh some of the other casts on giants and elves and whatnot. The moon eyed people and, and the ones that brought the knowledge, the ant people that brought the knowledge to the Native Americans basically told them you're going to need to be prepared to sit up on this cliff face and wait this shit out for a year and a half or better, you know? And, and that was how they survived was not by being in the fray, but by extricating themselves and being prepared to just hunker down. Right. By avoiding and, the lemmings running off the cliff. Well, right. Really and that brings down. us like, that that last set of questions brings us right into the next set of stanzas. And it's really weird because like that vibratory path that we're talking about carries itself right into the next set of questions that are the oh, next set of stanzas. I love the synchronicity, right? bro. Oh, this is unintentional. <laughs> well, before we go on, I wanted to um, mention what we're talking about is Please literally do. the idea of neutral gin. A neutral gin is setting idle until you know when to either be positive or negative gen um and the, one of the um i i recently um checked out um the first episode of netflix's new sandman series um not bad uh, and a lot of symbology and the i i noticed um because I have not yet read the graphic novel, it's on my list to check out. But I, I noticed in, in the first episode, um, when Dream has been captured, he doesn't speak, he doesn't do anything. He's biding his time for the right moment. That is neutral gym. That's what we are talking about, you know. Um, and I... I've learned that from a very young age. And I'm still trying to implement it in, into my life. Um, it's like shifting the gears, like when you when you're driving. Um, where where I where I first learned this idea of what we're talking about is ironically from Alfredo Airbender. Um, there's a scene where they go back to the city of Amashu. Um, so. Um, King Boomy could teach and earth spinning, but by that time, the, the Fire Nation has taken over and they have captured King Boomy and they got to go, you know, free him. And, um, they they almost free him. And, um, King Boomy, well, still, you know, in chains, tells him, tells Aang, um, I am being neutral, Jin. I am that he he was waiting for the time to to flee to act to you know to so he doesn't risk the lives of his people any more than what they have been. 
he he's waiting. Um, and that all comes down to, like I was mentioning earlier, it's a very personal thing. So because you know you are the the leader of your own army, you know the army of me, yeah, you know, <laughs> the famous one, the army of me. Um, that's all within you. Um, so you need to kind of be the troop, to, but also be the general to be like, okay, wait here, set, now attack, or, you know, be on the offense or defense or whatever you, you need to be. Um, you, need, you need to kind of learn to be neutral, be gray, um, be the observer, at, you know, at points. Thank you, Chris. Uh oh, Stein, you're muted. <laughs> oh, fuck. Yeah. Muted there myself. You yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Uh, All right. Stanzas 48 and 49, those were the fetters break. That's, that's where the, that's when we can no longer sit idle. That's when it, that, that just happens. And basically, you're in the fray without a choice. 48, how fair the gods, how fair the elves. All Jotunheim groans. Gods are at council, loud war the dwarves by the doors of stone. The masters of rocks, would you know yet more? Now Garm howls loud before, and I'm not going to pronounce that word, read it yourselves. The fetters will <laughs> burst and the wolf run free. Much do I know and more can see of the fate of the gods, the mighty in fight. All right. The loud roar, the dwarves by the doors in stone, the masters of the rocks. That is something that we've been talking about harnessing our, our ability to control word. At one point, it was said that our ancestors could with the sound of their voices name the wind, the fire, the earth and the water and control them. That by knowing their name and being able to speak their name, you could command them. Right? And we have lost there. we yes, we now it's it's in the same realm of it's more in the realm of word. It's the spoken magic. Oh, that's how the, before the stream or started you're coming out how the, Odin interacted with the sitter was through the word right yes this, so like through the ansu's rune through the spoken word of odin through the spoken power you could not only control basic elements but everything around you and i think our ancestors had a grip on that and the tales have been passed down to us that this was possible we all feel that magic is is out there it's it's tappable it's accessible right but many of us are on a journey to find out how do i use my form of magic what form was my ancestors form that was passed down to me right and i think in in all of the germanic carried down tribes the aryan and and so on you have word and scyther right and word is that spoken magic right Scyther is more of a magic of the, the mind and soul where you can cast yourself into a different realm without speaking, without any of that. But with word, by controlling the vibration and the very tenor of your voice, like the weirding way, you could control not only the people's influence around you, but everything, right? And in, in, in us questioning that, in us counseling like the gods in this very discussion right we are bringing ourselves just one little micron closer to it you know what i mean trying to open the, the portals of how do we access the knowledge that's already in our blood then the knowledge that our ancestors gave to us that their ancestors gave to them how do we wake it up and we can only wake it up through odin and freya we can only wake it up through that vibration that that commanding you know what i mean so we're at this point now where we're questioning it we know something is coming 
and when do we react? When do we do we do something? I think the thing is now we plan. Now we lock arms and we wait so that when that thing happens, we're not alone. When that thing happens, we are a tribe. We are we are together. We are more fierce as a bundle than we are as one. You know what I yeah, mean? The fascia. And that's mm-hmm. the that's the widening of the bandwidth, the the expansion of the vibration, the growth of the tribe, the the growth of the knowledge of gods. It's all just growing right now, right? It's the building chakra, up. Man. The throat shaft was powerful, dude. When you're in tune, when you're in tune and of sound mind and you, yeah, when you of one accord, you know, all those, all that verbiage of, vibrations and, and everything you're saying is you know be the alchemist like I, i've been on this trip lately where i am the alchemist <laughs> and my body is all, all alchemy from yeah man top to bottom we are a vessel how do you react to that statement <laughs> i think it's it is definitely about getting in touch with those ancestors but at the same time it's also about getting in touch with nature because that's i mean but what about Animals the Akashic know. records? We yeah, have amnesia. We have a little bit I, of amnesia. I don't, believe that. I don't believe we have amnesia. I believe that we have been convinced that we have amnesia. It's been forced upon yes. people. Well, I don't oh. believe we have amnesia. I don't Hail. believe that at all. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Go, going, going back you know, to, uh, to what we discussed, uh, I believe there was um, off stream about the, um, the placebo effects yeah. like that that also works in in weird ways in mental ways if you're if you're told something enough you'll start to believe it sleepy you're now right. why do we call right. that the placebo effect when when that is, is the right? way of word that is i mean well that's the thing it's just the placebo effect is just proving how powerful your belief system is so if you know and that's kind of like a dead giveaway of an experiment right it's like hey this is what's happening um you know because we can access all that knowledge at any point in time it just depends on how dedicated you are and how much you really want to know there's no shortcut there isn't you know you i don't think we can do it alone though rach i i think we have to absolutely not we have to tap Odin or we have to tap Freya in order to, You do need or to I mean, we, guys. we may be able to do it through other gods. We, we each may have our own God that is our guide. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But like, I feel this in tune nature with Heimdall and Tyr. And I always have, yes. right? The, the, the observer and the justice, the balance, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. There's the, the guardian yeah. and the God of war. And speaking of working together and uh, and you know web and net and whatever, like I, I've always had like the biggest issue that uh, people that I connect with, like like-minded people, they never live where I do. They're never like just around the block or just on the other side of town. You know, they're they're over here on this on you know in this part of the world or that part of the world, and it always annoyed the crap out of me but later i've been told by someone or that was their their thought on it and i i do like that that um it's like a net you know and the knots are never like close together if you want to if you want to cast a a broad net the the knots mm-hmm. are placed it's pretty far from each other and i think that's how it works with you know like-minded people as well you're you know you're creating that that web that nest by you know placing knots all over the place that reminds me of the glass bead game to a degree I'm not What's entirely that? familiar with it but it's like uh, no do, I don't do know explain. everybody's got their own piece to the puzzle i think yeah, we all we all bring something to the table. We all have <laughs> knowledge to share. We all um, we all have a part in this in this battle. We all have a part to play. And uh, bringing it slightly back to the uh, the Akashic records, uh, there is this 
believe that um that your soul that like whatever physical life that you're living that your soul um has chosen to uh to live that life that everything that has happened is happening and is yet to happen it is all written in the um in the akashic records and you could you could definitely uh relate that relate that to the um the web of weird you know mm -hmm. and I, I think that's i think that's an interesting thought but uh then comes the issue of um free will like do we have free will if everything is determined already and like with and you know with all the the cycles and the yugas uh or like however you want to you want to call it if it keeps happening again and again and again as cycles do do we really have a a choice you know do like we can act a certain way we can do certain things but if it's a cycle if it's going to happen again does it really matter what we do can i, can I chime in on that one 100 percent and, and it, it doesn't that? matter. Yeah, uh, it doesn't matter to the earth, but it matters to us. But absolutely, go ahead. So one one concept is um, the thirty three degrees. In that, if all of if say over thirty three percent of people were to get on this type of mindset, we could literally affect change and possibly break that yuga cycle you're talking about. But we're so far. There's a reason why that 33 is is out there, mm -hmm. potentially. This is just a school of thought. I'm not saying I subscribe to this. I'm just saying it's it's out there. No, it's it's okay. Just explain. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So there's that concept. Um, we're so far away from that. So do do. Can we make those changes in that lack of free will you're saying to avoid these cycles? We would need such a a, a upswell of conscious change and energy um, to make that change. And the other aspect is for me personally, as an individual, you have these, I'll just you know use the word matrix. You have these um, programs that if you do everything the same, you go take the same route to work, you go to the same coffee shop, you go to the same thing. The resources of this realm don't really need to be allocated to you too much they already know and they can um supposedly the simulation can't read your mind but it knows your chemical balance it knows your routines etc but as you start to shake things up and navigate in different ways and spontaneous ways and you change your route now more resources need to be applied to you they go what's going on we need to and now you're shaking things up as you break that monotony potentially you know these resources need to be now more applied to you what is stein doing he's this and that let's give him this let's put this in his way let's give him these resources let's uh, let's pay more attention to him or her right this is another concept yeah there's if you if you're ways. going if you're like going over the same well cycle basically every you day loops. you know so you have loop yeah, yeah, you have loops as an individual and you have loops as a whole, just a whole, you know, species or whatever, or whatever right? Yeah. But if you can go, you can change those loops a little bit, even by an individual. I'm telling you, man, that's where the manifestations happen. That's where the like things start to happen. You go, why is everything just happen to be working out for me? You start to change those loops. We're all stuck in patterns. I don't live, personally, I don't live on a seven day day of the week type I, I i barely know what day it is today if i'm being honest <laughs> you know what i mean like the only reason i even know what day of the week it is because i have bills at the end uh, on the first the gregorian commerce calendar that's the only reason i'm in that but besides that i navigate in a spontaneous way so i, I find that this concept of changing being change your route change your drive change your routine and you will literally start like the attention will be put on you. You go, oh my gosh, Stein is changing the thing. So now we need Ripples to figure out what's in the ripples. fabric. 
ripples, yeah. bro. Ripples. Yeah. Like, when you stay when you stay stagnant, you're not vibrating. You're doing the same thing over. You've carved an easy path. There's no resistance, no friction, no vibration. But when you stray from that path, you create ripples. You create vibrations in the fabric. And we have witnessed, this is not a joke, dude. We have, and you'll watch this happen with this very podcast. Within the next three to four days, there will be other podcasts that normally don't talk about this stuff covering the same topics we are covering because yeah. of the ripples. Yeah, we've, right? we've had that, well, increasingly happen um, over the uh, over the last few podcasts. I actually are just... As well, with the shows I do, it'll happen Friction well. creates vibration. Yeah, so I, had, I had a sink the other day. I haven't shared this yet. It was a small sink. I've had bigger sinks. With um, working with um, weaving spiders, welcome. Um, but th- I had a very s- small one for we just did episode ninety four, and right before episode ninety four, this YouTube account I follow, which has the, for years has had the number ninety four in it. This a day before we um, streamed episode ninety four made an announcement video that he was dropping the 94 in his name. He was keeping the same YouTube name, but he was dropping the 94 just because he felt like it. Huh. That's, that's, it's interesting. It's, it's those tiny, just what, what seemed like tiny insignificant things, you know, those are, those are interesting. Like you, you can have the, you know, the big things and the big events and everything, lining up and that's like oh that, that's that's grandeur and that's you know it's so big it's so awesome and whatever but uh, at, le- at least to me it's those those tiny things you know like with the number 94 or a name or whatever that makes you go huh dude can i share a sync with you stein real quick man oh yeah please do bring them out dude, where them like out. a week or <laughs> like a week or two ago um so the shim okay, I don't want to get too involved, but the Shemitah was 47 days away from the Shemitah, which is um, the end of the Shemitah, which is September 27th. I I happened to make my just randomly on a Wednesday made my 47th YouTube video, just random. My um, TG group just happened that day to have a, a new member. Who was the 47th member of that <laughs> of that group that evening we talked we had a live and we were talking about stuff i started talking about silver and one of my homies brought up that silver is the 47th uh element on the elemental table yeah and if you want to go into numerology four plus seven makes 11 11 is one of the the bigger um angel numbers right. so to yeah, speak so this, 11 22 33 so is are we talking coincidence get out of here you know what i mean nah. like that's literally happened i was like i was so blown because other <laughs> people started i was like oh my Think, this is all not intentional none of my stuff i'm so unintentional with my actions it's, it's crazy you know what i mean but Think about this, like a ripple starts out small. You you drop one little pebble into a lake and it sends little ripples out that become bigger and bigger. Now, more and more things can be affected by those bigger ripples than at the center of the circle, right? Because it's getting wider and wider. It's casting out further and further. That's just a little pebbles resistance. Stein did something in creating the tribe that was an absolute resistance to the entire system. Because their ideation is to have you docile and not question things and not seek knowledge, but just accept and drone on like a sheep. And he created this friction against the system that I think hit hard with a lot of people in the tribe that that drew drew us to it. You know what I mean? This idea that people of different beliefs can get along. You know what I mean? People of different spiritual beliefs, political backgrounds, and origins, countries of origin can all communicate about the same things and have the same desires, goals, 
and ideations for a society. You know what I mean? And I, I think in, in just the creation of a, a tribe online is such a defiance to the system because of their trying to separate us and they're trying to pull us apart and tear the community apart in such a way that this is the ultimate resistance to it. Like the Native American Indians, they fought and fought and fought and got kicked off of their own land. And the one little thing they got now is a reservation. And, and you know, everybody looks, oh, like they're, they got this land that they're allowed to do anything on. It's like anarchy there. They keep their own law. No, it's not. It's not like anarchy there. It's peaceful. They're more in tune with nature. Yes, they do a couple things that are not in your set of customs but their society works. They trade with each other. They have common ground. And in him creating the tribe, he created a common ground. Yeah, and, and that friction. And speaking of you rips. know diversity, like diversity is strength, but like actual diversity, not the diversity that it's being pushed on us. Like yeah, the world just, stuff. yeah, that's, that's not diversity. Like just, just this this podcast alone, you know, we're with six different people and we all like we think alike, but we don't all follow the same uh, the same path. I mean, yeah, you know, Josh and I, I guess we're the the two most similar, you could say. But, yeah. yeah, but like you have your ideas on on um on things i have my ideas on things you know we have like just these six people on this podcast is already quite a diverse bunch and we're getting along just fine we're getting along well you know exchanging ideas making the, making yeah. making connections and you know making connections between different belief systems even because those connections are there and like we should be focusing more on what connects us instead of what divides us and not the forced, as you know, Branch put it so beautifully, woke connection, like, you know, equity, like everything has to be the same, you know, men are women, women are men, light is dark, dark is light, everything is the same. No, like actual equality, actual diversity, Dogma has always been a problem with me. My my uh, one of my main things I like to do when I'm online is to challenge paradigms, and then not trade one paradigm for a for another. Par you know, like paradigm parameters. You know, you have that box. Think outside the box, mm -hmm. etc. So I love this. In fact, if you talk to me tomorrow, guys, I might change. I might have a whole nother outlook. <laughs> on the whole, I might have my whole mind. You know. <laughs> Everything I said tonight, like remember what I said yesterday? I don't believe any of it. Are I'm, you I'm, a, are you a fire sign for a dog? No, no. Maybe oh, in the okay. opposite uh, house. I'm um, I'm an Aquarius. So. Oh, uh, of course, yeah. of course, Capricorn right here. So, yeah, yeah, bro. So when you have Jeez. this, yeah. <laughs> and, my, and and anyone listening to this, I highly recommend you um. Deep, you know, you get your code, so to speak. Um, there are so many amazing beings out there that you can decode yourself, by the way. You don't need others, yeah. but you could use maybe um, people who are a little more knowledgeable like me. I, I need people a little more knowledge, like subject matter experts, so to speak, and I'll pay them. And, and I'm telling you, when you get your code, whether it's this house, that house, you even put it in the tarot, you put it in the pie. I've had people decode me and like using the pie ref, all of them combined. You really, that's how I know this isn't all random. We talk about free will or not free will. I mean, there is a, there is a code, but and we, the more you know about this code, Fibonacci sequence, you know, you, we can go on and on and on. It's not all just random gibberish, nonsense, chaos. Nah. When you know that this, I, and this, I'm on loan, you know, sometimes, you know, the creator has his favorites and I, I appreciate my, my on loan avatar, but this is on loan and it's not who I am. I don't identify as a, as a, uh, you know, 
white male American whatever my I don't like that's just my avatar man but who I am who, who I am it's in my code dog so I, I would recommend anyone to like just it really helps uh when you get yourself deco pay someone to do it hey let hey whoever resonates <laughs> well, with you yeah there are ways that you can deprogram and decode yourself. You can basically break those parameter boxes that you were talking about. We are raised with a belief that this is real, this is not real. And because we believe that, we grow up and that is our reality. You know what I mean? We can break down those barriers just by telling ourselves things before we go to bed at night, by thinking on it, by creating mantras for ourselves. You know what I mean? We are, we're doing the same thing to ourselves that the news is doing to everybody else. You know what I mean? You can break we're, the cycle. Yes, you can break the hypnosis and, and literally bust your walls down just by asking yourself to do it in the right ways. You know what I mean? And I think that we all, and people even in praying before bed, right? You're... You're asking for something before bed or airing your grievances because that's on your mind. And as you go to sleep, that's what you think about. So that's what becomes most relevant and most true and most boxed in in, in your life. Now, if you set those prayers to instead do the exact opposite, not create walls to create parameters, but to break them down, I think that's where the pagans differ from the Christians or the Abrahamic religions. We were told from our religious text to seek knowledge, to not be a sheep. You know what I mean? We, we are to follow the, the, the will inside of ourselves and know that it, if it is on the right path or the wrong path and then take responsibility for that. Not told to just follow that sheep, he's doing the right thing, and they're all going to wind up in the right place in the end. No, but right? I think I think even the the Abrahamic faiths, um, like that, they, it's a it's a subversion. Like I I I don't believe that. Um, like it's it's just another uh, you know, especially Christianity. I I don't know about uh, Judaism or Islam. I don't know enough about it. I don't want to know. It's not up my alley. But you know, Christianity, in its essence, it's a good, let's just call it mystery school. But uh, the church has moral just, principles. Yeah, sure. You know, moral, moral principles, principles, guidelines, whatever. You know, they're they're not they're not bad. I mean, also a lot of you know things in common with you know how we pagans live, how we pagans think. But uh, the church has such a huge grip on it because uh, I believe I spoke about that in the in the drive recently. You know, everything has to go through the church. Like that's the only way. You'll only reach enlightenment through the church. You'll only find God or find Jesus or whoever through the church. But I I don't believe you need that like I, I i am willing to believe that in its very essence at, at the very very start of things yes it was another mystery school it was another good religion with the focus of ascension enlightenment whatever in mind but over time that too has been sub uh, subverted just so much and the well the parasitic elite like pretty much literally you know has their talents in it because that's another way to control people through faith you know people it, it's it's groupthink it's just another way of groupthink i mean you have you know the church is god and government is god just as long as you follow someone else, as long as you follow another group who tells you what to do, what to think, how to think. And, you know, we're talking about Ragnarok, about the yogas, about cycles. That's another cycle that, uh, that we need to break. And 
that I believe is being broken because uh, even at the height, at, you know, during the height of the uh, pandemic, scamdemic, uh, convicts, like however you want to, however you want to call it, like, there were there were there were banners on churches that, you know, oh Jesus won't save you from COVID, but the shot will. Yeah. It's like so how how does a church you know a, the the house of god how do they not put their faith in their own idol in their own god you know science is the new god government well, science christians a bad name that's kind that, of the problem that christianity too, that <laughs> there's too. not too many there's not too many real christians actually this well this goes back to its free will do you want to know how you find out if you have free will or not? What will you do? Okay. If you can't answer that and you know exactly what you're going to do and you come up with it's and or buts, I'm going to tell you right now, you don't have free will. You can't ask, do we have free will? I have free will. I can't speak for you. Yeah. You know, we're talking about knowing your code. Is it all predestined? Do we have free will if we, if it's destined? Look, just because the math tells you what your avatar is going to do doesn't mean that you're not going to be the most pure being that you're going to be you know that's not what will is <laughs> yeah <laughs> no, that's just, like the saying, just because you're gonna die doesn't mean you can't live along the way exactly exactly we all we all have the same end but we all have different paths to follow to get there well and so that's perhaps a good way to segue in What's the difference between those who Loki leads and Odin leads? Or is it and there who... come the 51st and 52nd stanza. I was waiting for it. <laughs> oh, Chris okay. has a comment for uh, Before we go to that, I'll 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 uh, I'll pull them up, but uh Chris, you uh you have something <laughs> on it, so um speak your mind. Oh thank you. You could have gone ahead and read the stanza. <laughs> I just it it what I the the conversation that was unfolding made me think of I had recently listened to a podcast and I thought I would mention it even though I have my griev grievances with this I don't fully subscribe to this it's just something I heard and I felt like it. Um, reminding me of part of the conversation that's unfolding here. Um, so I take this with a decent si si size grain of salt. <laughs> um, and that is um, on this podcast, they was talking about um, how there are few, but some sources that say um, the resurgence of spirituality in the 1800s with that first um, Portuguese case get, to get their names. The, um, it was this um, Portuguese paranormal case um, that, and it, um, that, that first case is what um, kind of started and ignited the whole spiritual movement of the in the 1800s because before then um the west was becoming um more materialistic um and so um this the sources um that you, this podcast was referencing uh, from the book they was going over um was saying that that first case um was done on purpose um, to 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 reintroduce the idea of uh, spiritualism and the occult and mysticism into the Western world, and it kind of backfired a little bit, um, apparently. Um, and now, um, you know, we. It, it said that around every hundred of years, our, our the materialism um, 
rises so much that they have to fabricate a case to re reintroduce some things to us um, so we don't forget them. Um, and the reason why, what made me think of this was I was thinking of what um, Fertini said earlier of, about um, the sound waves um, and how I, cause I was thinking about the this whole time I've been thinking of the idea of compression. Um, so I've, I've, I've noticed um, in a lot of new music and um, there's a lot of compression and these are supposed to be like, you know, big studio releases from like big singers and it's like overly compressed. And I'm like, why are they putting out this overly compressed music? Yeah, you know, I have a bit of a trained ear because um, I took um, two audio classes in college. Um, and so I, I kind of listen to, to these things. Um, so going back to the whole, you know, introducing spiritualism and then tapering it off and kind of controlling the amount of spiritualism at, that we get like a church does. Like we're talking about how the, you have to go through a church um, instead of going, just having your relationship between just you and God. Um what that I just I just wanted to um, bring bring that up that the idea of um, you know control um, you know having your spiritualism on tap right the, and, but you don't, you're not controlling the the, the hose the, what the tap's going you you're you're just being a little drip just to hold you over. Because um, in this I idea that they was talking about, the reason these, um, according to this, again, I said, like I said, I don't fully believe this, but the these spiritual groups, um, these you know secret society spiritual groups, the reason why um, they kind of give us some spiritualism, some occult knowledge, and then taper us back. Um, is because we need us at a certain frequency, a certain level. Um, so we can't have us raised too high. We can't have us be too materialistic. We need to be on this level um, for them to do whatever they are doing. Um, like I said, I just wanted to mention that. Like I said, I, I have my gr grievances with that idea, but it, I thought it tied into what we're talking about a little bit. So I just wanted to mention it. No, I think that's I think that's a good one, and I think um, there is definitely something to uh, to be said about that. That um, I, you know, I uh, think the pyramids were a way of controlling the resonance, a way of controlling the frequency. I think the pyramids were a tool that they used to use to control the actual frequency, to tune people up, tune them down, to part the sea to create different events they could use the the vibration i mean there's so many things about the bosnian pyramid by itself that that feed from what chris just said about the control of vibration they had this system of quartz rocks that are covered in this mixture of like golden ceramic that have these holes in the sides of them where they would use tuning forks to hit different frequencies, right? Now, have we just lost the science of frequency or are people actually keeping us from this knowledge? I mean, if you look at Nikola Tesla, right? Even his ideas, the reason they were so shunned by the mainstream is because they tapped into occult ideas and vibrations and frequency as a source of power, right? And, and they couldn't charge for that. They couldn't make a profit off of it. And in the church, I think the same thing. How can we fine tune our followers so that we can build a golden empire on their back and their labor, right? 
we could tell them that being poor and being humble is the greatest thing and they'll give us everything in excess that they make that they don't need to eat right and i i think those are the traps that we've fallen into as as humans in the past we've hunted for that oneness for that that being a part of the spiritual so that we submitted ourselves to something because we were told that was the spiritual high garden. You know what I mean? That was the spiritual all say it. You know what I mean? What when when they say it is. Well, as as pagans, we question everything. We never complied to that. We were dangerous to them more than any other people. So they had to delete us or minimize us. And so started the Theodosian Accords and the witch hunts. They had to take our vibration out of the frequency, right? And I think that's another that's another spot that we're at right now and before Ragnarok, right? We are at the shaking of the tree. We're at the vibration, right? We're at a changing point in vibration. Now in the next couple stanzas, the questions were asked just recently, you know, uh, uh, the branch said something about where does uh, Loki come into all this when he's riding on that ship. And in in those next stanzas that actually that vibration flowed right into it. Oh, right? He's riding on now. So really quick before you go into these stanzas, um, I'm going to have to go. But I do, you know, want to throw out there some parting final thoughts. You know, how do we combat that kind of stuff? It's going to be through the arts. Because, I mean, think about someone who's blind. They're not seeing the pyramids. Can any of them attest to what they feel? Feeling? Are we, are we feeling? Are we in tune? You know, those frequencies, so much of frequency does involve our sight. Even people who don't believe in salt lamps, that they do anything, will acknowledge how peaceful they feel just seeing it and I having it like present. mine. You know, <laughs> I love mine. I think it works. <laughs> but yeah, even, even you know, it's all of it works. works. You know, all, all of it works. Everything works. Everything is true. So it's going to be through the arts. It's going to be us showing up fully and completely as ourselves. That And, you know, without abandon, you know, you LARP this thing hard. LARP it hard. You know, it's not <laughs> cosplay. It's cost life. <laughs> <laughs> you know so oh I, I like i like that one i like that one i'm, I'm gonna i'm gonna get that as a tattoo it's not cosplay it's <laughs> no, cosplay it's from Venture brothers so you got to do <laughs> like this. whatever i'll so, do I'll, I'll get it anyway i don't care live the larp <laughs> so, live the larp yeah you man. gotta live it you gotta live your truth so hard because that's that's what is so irritating to people who aren't you know who are controlling others that's what's gonna really you know that's those ripples it's real but it also causes friction so you have to be ready for that battle too but yes i like that i like that those are uh good closing words closing thoughts on uh, on your end you have uh other obligations so unfortunately uh the uh, the local goddess is uh, going to leave us for now um but yeah rachel thank you Thank you for uh, for being here. Thank you for uh, for sharing your thoughts, sharing your uh, your views, and uh, have fun with uh, with uh, with the girls, with uh, Kaylee and Michelle. You're gonna do tarot readings. <laughs> yeah, we're doing Moon Day tarot, and we're uh, it's on Kaylee Bricana's channel. She does it every day, but this week we're having uh, mm -hmm. Michelle's healing home guests, so Michelle. we'll get herbal and. Virgily. So yeah, check it out if you feel like it. Thank you so much for hosting. Thank all of you for your wonderful insights. This is an excellent conversation. And everyone Thank listening. You for us. So, okay. Thank you. So Have long. fun and uh we'll see you in the tribe. Joe. Yeah. I think I'm gonna go because I wanna catch the, the tarot reading. I really oh, enjoy this. Man. I think I'm gonna go already as well yeah <laughs> no nah, it's okay you uh you, you've you came up with some uh some great things uh again and 
Yeah, so you you too, thank you for uh, for sharing everything, sharing your thoughts, sharing your opinions, weaving some some good webs and um, yes. Uh, just real quick, let the before you go, let the people know where they uh, where they can find you. What uh, what you got uh, got going? Just plug yourself real quick, and then you uh, you can go to the girls. Okay. Um, yeah. Uh, first, uh, a final thought that I just had hit me um, that I'll put out there before I leave. You know, we're talking about gray, um, and earlier. Rachel mentioned gray as in like gray aliens, mm-hmm. include like you know, referring to them as the other. Um, and um, what does in all these contact ease, what do they say that the, the grays are interested in? They're interested in our emotions, right? They're and our emotions, um, are. And, you know they affect um, and they they kind of dance they are part of with our, our frequency you know depending on what your emotion is depends on what you what you're vibrating at if you can control your emotion then you can control what frequency you're vibrating at um, so the, and the fact that the the um, grays, um, again, as in the aliens, um, are are so gray, are so neutral that they are emotionless, um, accor- according to that whole community. Um, so, you know, we're talking about frequency and vibration and gray and being neutral, setting idle for a time being. And I just uh-huh. wanted to pull all that together a little bit. Um, but yeah, thank you guys so much. I'm definitely going to check the rest of this out once you upload it and see what you guys come up with after I leave. Um, it's a very amazing conversation. Thanks for re- reading the stanzas, Joshua. Um, it was great meeting you, Bird Dog. Um, and thanks to everyone for listening. Yeah, you can find me. Um, on, I'm on all the, a lot of the different Telegram channels. Um, I... I'm most frequent um, the weaving spiders because um, um, I it's kind of well I've I've found my home I guess you can say for for, for the most part um, <laughs> so I'm usually on the air Saturdays and on and Wednesdays um, like I, said, I do King of Cups um, every new moon um, I do. Um, New Moon FM. I just did one yesterday. It was delayed. I got busy on the actual um, New Moon. So we did a broadcast yesterday. Um, and I think the next thing that I'm going to be doing is possibly with the branch. So I think we are going to go over Neon Genesis. Oh, yeah, man. That would be um, a lot of fun. Pretty soon. Mm-hmm. So... Um, for all the anime level lovers out there, might um, do the uh, occult esoteric breakdown of that show, which w- will be fun. I didn't plan on focusing on TV shows and movies, but I, I love it. So I'm going to keep on going with it. As long as, as long well, as you do have a back- I can't. But you have a background in that, though, right? So that isn't that you went to college for. Yeah, I I got a degree in in film and the arts, um, so it's and that's it. yeah, and that's what my um, um career path was going on until um things happened and I I decided to go down a different path. But um yeah, uh, you're- it's fun, and I'm I'm glad that um I I can bring something to the table with all that. So. Hey, we're, we're happy to have you, man. With the, with the, for the Great Horns and everything. So much love, guys. See you next time. Yeah, see you around, Mr. King of Cups. Swan. Swan. Oh, Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> All right, guys. Oh, well, then, then there were uh, then there were four. The four corners still stand. Let's oh, yeah. uh let's jump to those stanzas, man, because that's yeah. that's been biting at it. 
Yeah, before um, uh, before everyone decided to leave us already, you uh, <laughs> right. We, um, we've only got ten more to get through, man. Ten more to get through. You might uh, want to mark the uh, time so that that would be a good thing to timestamp when we read the stanzas. Yeah, good one. Uh, I'll uh, I'll too. I'll do that in the uh, in the editing uh, process. Yeah. Um, I'm I'm gonna have to edit the shit out out of this anyway, so why not? uh let's see there we go 51 to 56 that's the one bring it down just a little bit sign all right over the sea from the east there sails a ship with the people of muspel those from muspelheim at the helm stands loki after the wolf do wild men follow and with them the brother of byliest goes 52 Cert fares from the south with the scourge of branches, the son of the battle. Pro, hold on a minute. All right. Cert fares from the south with the scourge of the branches, the son of the battle gods, shown from his sword. But it says the son of the battle gods is spelled S U N, right? Yeah. Like the battle gods have a different son than we do or ah. their sun is a different color than ours right is cert from a realm with an ultra uh, uh infrared sun not ultraviolet you know what i mean a bunch of questions with that hmm. the son of the battle god shown from his sword the crags are sundered the giant women sink all right the dead throng hell way and heaven is cloven notice it doesn't say valhalla it says heaven is cloven. Yeah, talking All about right. that, talking about heaven and hell. All right. Now, I don't know if you noticed the oddity in that, because this is a Norse text, but Supposed. it was interpreted by some Christians. Um, so I'm just gonna leave that part to maybe it was a little bit of Christian influence that seeped into it, but basically valhalla gets cut in half asgard gets cleaved right by cert sword yeah so you a, have a the giant sword. women sink all right think about that before this last round of inundations we had giants and before them we had titans yep we have five foot, six foot footprints cast in the side of mountains from when they were still liquid. We know that these massive human creatures walked the earth. What we call them in different languages is up to interpretation. What they would refer to Titans, we call the Jotun, right? Or the, the giants before our gods, which were giants to us. So we have this literal shrinking in the cycles of the last couple inundations, right? Yeah, with each generation, they shrink. The falling of men. <clears throat> we heaven is is cloven. Is we are we've been cut down. You know what I mean? We've been forced into caves in these inundations. And in our generation or 10 being raised in a cave before they can come out, they shrink. I mean, your children's children's children will be much smaller than you were if they're living in dark, cramped, closed quarters, right? And just saying that that goes to uh, a lot of the different tellings of the last inundation from the native americans telling of it where they had to get high up on the cliff faces because the ant people told them they had a, a long winter and a great storm coming or the people on the other coast being guided by the moon-eyed people in the caves to do pretty much the same thing get higher in elevation and prepare with a food store and you'll survive right that couldn't be communicated through the internet before 
So the only people that got that information were the first tribe to get told it. They prepared, got up in the cliffs, and they survived, right? That's how we've come into these bottleneckings of humanity. Now, let's just say, by some odd example, let's say the internet warned everybody this time, and we knew there was a mud flood coming, and all of 8 billion people tried to get to elevations above 5,000 feet above sea level to avoid it. Oh, dude, I'm in the Netherlands. You're, I'd be fucked. Like, we're, we're uh, like, the, most of our country is below sea level already. And, like, yeah, our, our dikes are strong um, in, in both ways. They're strong, you know, our dikes. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, but, but uh, yeah, okay, yeah, sure. English, beautiful language. Um, but I, I don't. You better have a raft, have a raft in your backyard. And see if you can get to Norway or Finland across the across the way there. Well, I mean, I guess from from the Netherlands that, I mean, it's still a couple couple thousand kilometers, but it wouldn't be as bad, I guess. You know, just no. sur- surfing the mud in my in my dinghy. Do you notice <laughs> in those in those stanzas though, Stein? They come from three different directions. One of them is left out. And you have to think about why would people come from the south, Cert come from the south, Loki's army come on the ships from the, the east, these people come from the west, because they're already in the north, they're yeah. in the mountains, they're in the highlands, when, when this battle goes down. So we know these were the gods of, let's call it northern Germany, at the time. Um, just for the sake of uh, history's placing of these tales, you know, they're rooting in Germany. Let's say that the Ragnarok happened last in Germany, and this is the way they saw it. And this is the way that they see it happening again, right? It would make sense, because from Germany, from Northern Europe, you have a lot more land mass uh, to the south, to uh, to the west, to the east, so yeah, even if it's a uh, a mud flood or like whatever else, uh, it would make make more sense that it'd be coming from from those directions and uh, like also just you know talking population wise, you know from the east we're talking uh, we're talking Arabia, we're talking little uh, we're talking Asia Minor uh, from the south could mean. You know, if we're if we're Africa. talking German, yeah, and even if we're talking Germany, the Teutonics, you know, the Romans, they they didn't Italy, they, yes, they were like particularly fond of like conquering the whole of Europe. You know, the Roman Empire. I mean, they didn't like Germany and the Germans, and especially the Netherlands, very much. No. Like we were we were a swamp land, like we like literally pretty much everything was swampy. And if you're like from right. the from the Mediterranean, with you know the olive trees and sun, sea, sands, then swamp plants, you wouldn't like it very much. Where are the Netherlands in relation to Italy? Um, you guys are northwest of Germany, correct? No, we're directly west of Germany. Directly west of? Okay, so Italy is a little southeast of you. Yeah. directly south and a little to the east okay now let's say that 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 telling of cert coming from the south right we know that just off the coast of italy there was sardinia the island of giants right interesting we also uh, know that in the area of lebanon they had the, the heliopolis and um the temple of Baalbek, right we know that there were giants south of there. We know that there were giants north of there and in Ooh. west of there. Dude. So Spurt coming from the south with his group of giants, right? From the, the Muspal. From, clo- from closer to the equator where the weather is a lot warmer, a lot hotter. So you could say they would be more flaming. Yeah. Right. They would be darker in complexion and cert was the black fire giant right Ooh, i so like i like that i like that thought this 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 is this is very telling for so many reasons 
You know what I mean? Yeah. As to if you look at just the base geography of where it happened, they give you the east, the west, the north, the south. If you look in the description of um, Yggdrasil, they they explain that that you know uh, to the east of it is this land, to the south of it is this realm, to the west of it is this realm, right? Would would something be to the west if it was in a different reality? Let's say if you had to actually cross a literal fabric of reality bridge to get to something, would it be to your west, or would it My be boss. maybe like the that or that that it's through a, a stone doorway in that direction, or perhaps over a mountain pass in that direction, right? It, Hmm. It makes a lot more sense to take a literal interpretation of it. it Yo, are, these, much... are these guys hiding in CERN, Switzerland, right now? <laughs> uh, um, CERN? Yeah. That's... There's, there's a lot going on in Switzerland right now. I'm just a curious. Are, I mean, we know there's a lot. Are they, like, incubating these giant efforts? I mean... So we've had pre-floods, and you talk about the um, uh, fire. So is the next iteration of is going to be fire-based or flood water? The next destruction well, is supposed to be fire. Yes. The next destruction is supposed to be fire. I say that as a question, not a statement. A nuclear. Uh, it's well, the flood was the water destruction, which yes. I, my personal opinion, is that. The, Video, the, moon, the moon used to have water on it and it poured off the moon onto the earth and as above next, so below bro and i think the ah. next one will be the sun pouring its fire onto the earth see dude <clears throat> well i gotta become a moon person mass, dude, we, we moon mass person, there there have there has been an increase in um it's, mass it, ejections in so flares. in heavy solar activity solar flares yeah so the last CME missed us by a literal couple thousand miles. Like if well, it would have happened, I think they said six hours earlier, it would have been a direct hit to the earth and it would have knocked out our entire power grid. It would have EMP'd us so hard that not a single cell phone tower or piece of the power grid would have remained working. So as the um, things change as above, so below the energies from above that you guys are talking about and below, um, that does equate also to things like volcano activity, uh, fire, right? Volcano involves, activity, nuclear explosion, search well, flaming sword, um, and water I, stuff, and all I, kinds of cool dude. I I do believe that we have that we also have had an increase in uh, in volcanic activity, like more volcanoes yeah, well, woke back up either be, being like, active or, or spewing or smoking again. Give you a literal interpretation that ties Nostradamus into Surt's flaming sword? I was wondering what you were going to bring up Nostradamus. All right. <laughs> Here <laughs> we go. You, you you been, you Nostradamus. You You've been sitting on Nostradamus Surt. for weeks. Get him. Nostradamus predicts that for the most part, an emperor will rise in Asia, right? Now, you look at the Japanese flag and the Chinese flag. They are white, uh, the white and red sun on the banners, the Japanese flag. The Chinese flag is stars and a red banner, right? A sun. The sun is a star, right? The Chinese are a currently warring tribe. So Sert's flaming sun on his sword could be a Chinese intercontinental ballistic missile with their flag on the side of it. Just putting that one out there to uh, roll around burn, because burn it literally sky. brings Nostradamus's third Antichrist mm -hmm. and all of that right into Sert's flaming sword and the Orient and but isn't there it, you know, it's all branch uh, I was I was gonna ask you isn't there um in the Christian theology there is talk about a flaming sword am I right well the sword of the Lord is kind of likened into that and the son of man will have the you know the word of God shooting out of his mouth like a flaming sword so that's one reference but 
also posted something there about Revelation, uh, talking about the sky rolling up like a scroll, kind of reminded me of what he was reading about just now. And so really, the last few stanzas you've been reading match the tenor of Revelation 6, uh, more specifically 612 through uh, Yeah, and it says the, like. every mountain and island moved out of place. So... Yeah. Which again, a mud flood type stuff would, you know, and the sinking and of Atlantis, mud floods, earthquake. Consider, yeah. Uh, think about also how the sound, you can liquefy the earth with a certain frequency too. And then everything would just like sink and jostle around. I mean, think of Which like, is the why they suppressed there. Nikola Tesla's work. There's oh, a so. lot of underground cities, um, you know. In Turkey and and uh, Greece, yeah, and even those... here in in Georgia, North Carolina, there's all kinds of like, porous type of ground uh, where people went underground to <laughs> yeah. hide. Um, so, um, still in um, and, and um, they're not destroyed, so they're not occupied, but they're not destroyed. So, do we want to rent like an Airbnb Earth. there during the apocalypse? I don't know, or during the Ragnarok? I don't know. But um, well, well, I'm we know that people have retreated into caves to survive through several of them. Well, wait a second, guys, because the very next verses are verse 15 and the kings of the earth and the great men and the rich men and chief captains and the mighty men and every bondman and every free man hid themselves in the dens and in the rocks of the mountains and said to Boom. the mountains and rocks, fall on us, Got and it. hide us. Fall on us and hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb, for the great day of his wrath is come, and who shall be able to stand? So I would be curious to know who's this character in, in the Ragnarok, you know, this person here. Well, uh, another aspect, and I don't know where in Revelations this is, but I've heard other prophecies, at least here in North America, because a lot of these things are somewhat geographical in nature is that the potential in North America is like a religious leader. Like, like we might see here in North America in the next decade or two, a, um, a one religious leader um, come to pass and everyone, it's like uh, you're in now this one religious order and that's who's in charge and that who's runs things. We can see Phoenix. here. And it, you mean like the Pope? Like yeah, a pope, oh. but like a North American pope, but like a like a all this like a black stuff. pope. I, I think, like a black pope. I actually, sure, man. yeah, man. Yeah, I actually bro. Like think the white black pope. I actually think that um, that that will be announced as the uh, the long-awaited second coming of Christ. Sure, sure. And uh, that is some scary stuff if you've looked into it, dude. And Brent, you were you were talking about that uh, about that before. And I I have talked about that on uh, other podcasts as uh, as well. Uh, but in relation to uh, Tartaria and the Tartarian Empire, the um, millennial reign, the millennial oh, yeah. reign of Christ, and, millennial thousand and years. Would that be a and would that be a perpetual twilight? Because you know the Sabbath day of rest begins friday when the sun goes down so that would be the twilight for the for the 1000 year rest so it, it kind of almost implies to me that it would be a perpetual twilight because the sun a lot of times is seen as a very oppressive because of our labor that we had to do under it, slavery and bondage yeah and uh, especially noonday is especially seen as like not good so you're not oh. supposed to be outside from like uh, well, they do worship Saturn. A lot of these, a lot of these uh, <laughs> Vatican types, are Saturn types. And, and going real back to um, the fifty-second uh, stanza, uh, the son of the battle gods, son with uh, S U N, you know, the yes. son of the gods, the son of God, you know, S U N S O N. I think there, there, there is, there is a connection there, you know, just even, I don't know, like, you know, when bird dog brought up all those etymological uh, stuff, like word magic is a, 
is a real thing and it is used to well to to control us and to um to justify how the elites work because they have well literally rewritten um our history everything rewritten our history rewritten rewritten the word for thumb is also soul like you can also you can interchange soul you can interchange soul soul yeah s-o-l s-o-u-l in spanish it's soul you know soul solar yeah Dude, we're... <laughs> you're right. So I don't it's... know how this was translated from English. I don't know how well, like how well it was done, so to speak, or with that, like you were guys were saying, kind of a bit of a Catholic influence, so to speak. So we all we have to take all these translations into um, uh, no, account. But I, I, I think well, I think there's something Catholic, there. Man, I just want to comment on the uh, so there's the Roman Catholic, and then there's Orthodox. I just wanted to make that distinction because I have been spending a lot of time with uh, Orthodox congregation, and I was really shocked at the big difference because a lot of the negative that we think about in terms of Christianity and Catholicism is actually more specifically Roman Catholicism because there was actually yes. there was actually five eyes, holy sees, and uh, it was Antioch, Jerusalem, Alexandria. Constantinople and then Rome and Rome split off from the other four and and so like pretty much everything most people have a problem with <laughs> comes from Rome specifically which again the Roman that, Catholic which is that I Italy region and there's a lot of giant influence there um, with Janus and other things um, so I just wanted to make that distinction because yeah. the Orthodox have a kind of a prophecy of their own that there will be this new uh holy roman empire established but not holy roman rather excuse me but like an orthodox empire well, like constantine had so well, there's a lot of that actually that comes around, there, around in the, the very last two stanzas oh. 65 <laughs> and 66 explain that the coming of the new god he's like the oh, great that... saint last great saint or something <laughs> like that but it's really whips things into shape but apparently he comes right before the antichrist <laughs> but i think he could very well yep. be the same person i don't know there comes on high all power to hold a l mighty lord all lands he rules so after ragnarok oh. is over <laughs> after idaho and the the six sons of the gods magni modi balder hoder vidar and valley are are putting society back together there comes on high all power to hold a mighty lord all lands he rules a one god comes back around wow so they use ragnarok and the destruction to bring around this one god theory right very phoenix 66 yeah. 66 <laughs> here's the here's the the phoenix from below the dragon, dark comes forth. Nighthog flying from Nithafuel, the bodies of men on his wings he bears. The serpent bright, but now must I sink. There's another reference to a bright serpent. And on the page before that, there is another talking of a serpent, a bright serpent with his gaze to the heavens i think um oh, so this is the beast of the air that you were mentioning earlier yes oh Very yeah it's a, a dragon and indeed yahweh is like is this how he is described you could interpret that as That's, being yeah. a dragon and he could definitely be i'm, I'm, well, not, oh, the, I'm not saying he one is page before that stein Sorry, bud. That's okay. But like, yeah, if if he is a a dragon, you know, he could definitely be the um, the one god rising to prominence or just pretty much taking over after 
um, after the Ragnarok, which looking at which looking at the um, like the religions of the world and the uh, and the history and how Christianity, Catholicism, Roman Catholicism basically has taken over Europe. Looking at that, you could say that we have already been through Ragnarok or at least through a cycle of Ragnarok and this is just the next one. 536 AD, the Dark Ages were... I- you, you can look at it however you want, but 536 AD, the last Ragnarok happened. The, and, the moral corruption, the hunting of everybody. And going back to the millennial reign, from what, from what time to what time are the Middle Ages set to have happened? Like from approximately 500 to 1500. That's a yeah, thousand, so one, that's a thousand one, years. That's a millennium. One one big cycle and uh was the black death the black plague in um the late 1300s forgive me if i i believe it's 1377 but it was a couple years there was a four or five years there that's where they talked about the they blamed it on rats from china but one third of the population died 1346 uh, to 1353 Look yes. up the Spanish flu. I think it, it goes right to the 1500s. If By the I'm way, not hold on, hold on. that's, so, that's well, seven on, years. On. That's seven hold on, hold years. On. Seven is supposed are, to be a divine number. Yeah, so there was, so you guys are bringing up other aspects. There's cycles. So you have these, uh, what you just said, the Black Death happened. That was a cycle. And then for, um, fast forward to, you know, like you were saying, the Spanish flu. So there, there's these cycles built in, these kind of major and minor ones. And, and if you were to sit, this is where researchers sit and they calculate the dates, et cetera. Um, and we're coming up on some of those dates very soon, evidently. But the uh, one aspect in those 1346, you said, and, and a handful of years was massive depopulation. One third of recorded North and Asia world died. Who knows what was going on in North America? Like we don't like a lot of um abandoned buildings were going on at that time so i don't know does this circle back to the crow thing i mean does that, you know what i mean there's, there's been massive um plagues and yes okay so it wasn't it wasn't rats it wasn't um it wasn't rats but there are turn there are um uh countings from even the church people that stuff from the sky was dropping stuff from the sky and dropping things and, and just killing people, man. This is not this is not uh, rats from uh, jumping on ships. So no. there's a lot of these uh, historical accounts that you can verify and validate if... of these major uh, plagues, die-offs, catastrophes, whether it's natural, mud flood, <laughs> floods, you know, you name it. It's if it's, uh, Wikipedia is to be believed, the um, like the very first, um, I know Wikipedia nowadays is a questionable source, sure. but um, apparently the very first plague epidemic or plague pandemic um, happened uh, what they call uh, around what they call the Neolithic decline around 3000 BCE. So before yeah, the common so, era. Yeah. So yeah. That's... So when um, and, and another aspect of that is, uh, and I don't, I'm, I'm digressing. I don't want to digress too far, but no, it's, when you it's, come to North it's cycles, America, it's cycles. Yeah, when you, yeah, when you cycles. come to North America and they blame the depop on European epidemics, I bet you there was. This place was already half wiped out just prior to any Europeans coming here in the, you know, official records. And, and, you know, one thing I um, hear about that stanza 65, another um, uh, another interpretation was uh, in 65. Rule he orders the and rights he fixes laws he ordains. That shall live. That shall ever live. So he basically writes, basically uh, stanza sixty-five. He writes the wrongs 
You know what I mean? Uh, which is interesting. So that sounds like he gets the bull of heaven. He gets the that's law. The laws that come from the Most High are the bulls and decrees. That's what it kind of sounds like. Uh, kind of like what we bind here on earth is bound in heaven. It's going to be like yeah. a re reconvening. Somebody commented on this earlier about maybe the regathering of the church in the United States. The Orthodox think that there'll be a new council. There's been like uh, seven ecumenical councils, and uh, they uh, there will be an eighth one eventually, and that's where the wrongs get righted. It's a reconciliation with the church itself, which Rome yeah. has been split off for hundreds of years from the four other eyes. So there's even been some talk about replacing Rome with Moscow as the Holy See, and just mm. they're just not even totally different religion at this point. They just are ir irreconcilable differences, basically. Yeah. So that's I, well. I mean, look, well, look within in the, the context of the Asian emperor, that could be Putin. Is you see what I mean? So, and he, if he becomes the new <laughs> quote Holy Roman Empire, but it's really Moscow now. So that could, that's what they think. I think some of them. I can see Putin being the new, um, yeah, new Orthodox mm -hmm. Constantine Emperor. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. I mean, I I don't know if. At least he knows judo or whatever. <laughs> yeah, friends, like, I, I have, don't, I have don't mess with. Don't mess with. We can respect the man at least. I, uh, you're you're I going can't to see him being a religious zealot. I, oh, he I is see him more so than most other reading. politicians, I think. Okay, guys, real quick. Uh, unfortunately, Burdock is uh, going to have to uh, to leave Half us too, leaving me with the with the Joshua. So that's going to be fun. <laughs> Thank you for spending time with us, Burdock. Oh, thank hey, you, sir. It's, it's, it's been, been a wonderful uh, conversation, man. You're it's, a fun guy. It's been great, man. It's been great. Uh, you coming in thinking you uh, you don't have a lot to bring, don't have a lot to offer, but bro, you you've had some uh, you've had some great Marvelous comments. Time. You've you've had some some great information, and you uh, you really added to the to the podcast. So, dude, thank you oh, very great. much for uh, thank you very much for coming on. Thank you. I, I, I'm, it's a, it's an honor to be around. Please continue the conversation. We need a part three and a part four. The oh, dude, the we're, we're nowhere near done. We're nowhere oh, yeah. near no, done, no, bro. Yeah. You no, guys this one's so going to continue as we see more signs. We'll do more episodes. This is probably oh, going to yeah. continue till like Ragn the the until Ragnarok. Ragnarok. Yeah, Ragnarok. yeah, <laughs> yeah pretty, pretty much. <laughs> pretty much. This is how we survive the cycle, brothers. This is how we do it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Man, you, it's been awesome. Such an honor. And I'll, I'm going to tap out just because my stamina and my endurance, I'm, a, I'm struggling right now. But uh, man, you guys are okay, so freaking smart, dude. You guys are smart and add so much. I'm glad I was able, able to add just a tiny, you know, a tiny bit of the to ingredients, man. But uh, I'm in your Telegram group, Peace and Harmony. And to all the listeners, man, Peace and Harmony to everyone, man. Much love. Much love, brother. All right, thank you. Peace out, bro. Salute. Peace. Oh, man. This is, uh, yeah. And then there were three. The Trinity sits still. Yeah, the, me with the two Joshuas. It, it had to be that way. <laughs> that, is, is, is that not funny in itself? The name Joshua means salvation. And See, Correct. Revelation, That's Revelation, why he's, he's <laughs> and Revelation is really interesting because it, <laughs> when we see this character on the white horse who has a bow, it's not an archery bow. It's so uh, the translation is from toxon, which is a simple cloth, and so it's for a hand fasting ceremony that is actually pagan. Oh. And so we do see this king rise up that we kind of see talked about. I see, I didn't even know this about Ragnarok, so. I'm so happy you're reading these stanzas because it's helping me put some pieces in from Revelation because we do see a, a, a prototype of this wedding in Joshua chapter 24 where the great multitude that was taken out uh, of Egypt they were wed along with 
Hebrews and the mixed multitude were wed to Jehovah under a standing stone and an oak, which is very, very similar to the hand fasting ceremony, because what would they would do is pass their hands through a hole in a stone and they would tie the knot with this mm -hmm. ribbon literally tie the, the knots yeah that's where this marriage ceremony comes from and the stone is the witness and the eye of the stone is the witness and so business transactions and stuff like that could be done through there as well like odin quote unquote odin was your witness i guess <laughs> yeah exactly there you go um and that that's lemon eye scatus as well multicolored ribbons that's that would be that um like a rainbow so i even wondered if it's like a multicolored cloth that the rider on the white horse has but anyway this character is one of the four horsemen and has that cloth so i've wondered if he's from like the tribe of dan um ah, and the... which which dan means judge because you need a judge for a marriage to be it's official what the right? Dedanan, going back to the the celtic mythology yeah, so Joshua yeah. is possibly the judge that officiates over the wedding with the, before the two witnesses in Revelation, which in, in Joshua 24 was an oak and a stone. So mm -hmm. what are those in Revelation? In the hand fasting, the hands go into the eye of the stone to be witnessed before yeah. the eye of God. Exactly. Right? Yeah. Is yeah. Odin that stone that we need? Is he the cave that we hide in? Well, is, is, stone is uh, used a lot of times to reference what I think is the pineal gland, probably. So when he sacrificed his eye to drink from the well, you know, did that have something to do with, you know, what's going on you know, there, you know? You know, um, I think holes in a stone, that's made me think of, um, I don't know if you're, if you guys are familiar with the concept, but uh, hagstones. I'm wearing one. Yeah, they're called Odin stones or hagstones. I wear. Yeah, one on that head. that was that was my first first thought yeah, when you were. That, I have a knack for finding those and four leaf clovers. Dude, that's the like beaches my... in Florida. The beaches in Florida are, are covered with those stones. Oh, dude! I mean, I get, I guarantee up. you, I could go to the beach for 15 minutes and get a hundred of them. Oh man, you're fortunate. I find them a lot of times in creek beds. Just natural wearing. Now, we we look at these prophecies and think it is a future telling, right? But when you look at the last two stanzas, they say that after Ragnarok, a one god will come to rule everything. 536 AD, the last Ragnarok happens. Now we're in the time of the Christian God. They wiped most of the pagans out, and Christianity is the bearing religion on the planet. Right? We are in that time of the one God right now. Yeah. May what I is interject? the next stanza say? And that's that, that's scary in itself. Because what is the next stanza? If we are in that time of God right now, right? What? From below the dragon, dark comes forth, Nithog flying from Nithyal. The bodies of men on his wings he bears, the serpent bright, but now must I sink. But I, I don't actually <laughs> think that, um, like the, these, like, dude, look around you. These are not divine times anymore. You know, the moral the, collapse. Yeah. These are the and, signs of the times. We are in the signs of the times. Yeah, and, um, you know, like I said, I, I talked about this before on, um, I believe it was part two of Tartaria I did with um, My Third Eye, with Ghost from, my, from the uh, My Third Eye podcast, um, that we are now in, um, and Branch, please correct me if I'm wrong on this, or if I'm, if I'm mentioning it wrong, um, Christian theology is not my strong suit, but that we are now in the so-called little season where the uh, where the devil is free to um, to tempt men to get them on his uh, on his side for his final battle with God. So um, 
which is the Nithog flying with the men on his wings. And yeah, the, yeah, yeah. Because the you know the the devil is often portrayed. I mean, he he is a fallen angel. I mean, L- Lucifer. I kind of see it as Loki, really, in a sense. I I oh. have a question. <laughs> I have a question for the branch that I've been wanting to ask for so long, right? The war of the heavenly host, right? When Satan split a third of the host and a third battled with Satan, a third remained dormant, a third battled with the Lord. When when that war was started, I have heard this interpretation that God wanted to wipe mankind out. But Satan said basically you've gave me dominion over one thing do not take that away from me and god said i'm gonna wipe them away regardless and then the war ensued is that the story that that you know from christianity like what caused the war of the heavenly host what was the rift between god and satan that caused that war to pop off well um See, I don't like to use the word Satan because that's a plural form that refers to all fallen angels. And what we kind of have seen over time is the conflation of that word with Lucifer, who was uh, basically the, Pope. the priest. Uh, and he was perfect and kept all the commandments and stuff as well. But it was. Um, Who was that again in the, in the tribe? Someone mentioned that that um, that that Lucifer was um, that he was actually a uh, that he was a priest and that he is yeah. not the devil or whoever. Uh, sarcastic warlock was was that yes, which is why I tend to use the word Satan rather than Lucifer, because I think Lucifer was a man that was just created or conflated with an evil ideation and the luciferian idea was birthed from that i think the serpent slash satan is a multitude of entities but the one that actually claimed the war against god who who led the war that would have been well his name is probably a zazzle um because lucifer is also a title so that's where we kind of got to watch those titles of Satan and Lucifer because that's like Satan just means adversary. So that'd be like those with Loki or whatever that don't get remembered in the stories, don't get to be sang about. Uh, they don't die with honor, et cetera, et cetera. And that's, and then by contrast in Christianity and Judaism, well, Christianity doesn't embrace this as much, but Judaism has a strong concept of Ha Shem, which means the name. But Shem also means fame. So to live in the stories and the verses um, in contrast to being cut out. And so Azazel is to not to not be remembered. He's considered the scapegoat that ascribe all sin to him. So whether it's true or not, it still says that all sins ascribed to him. So to me, that suggests that he was the leader of this group that rebelled and yes it's true that maybe other angels taught men things to into the wilderness scroll back up just a touch but he was the one that led them so that's what makes his sin especially interesting and he's one goat is selected by lot and sent into the wilderness for azazel and that's in the september season uh after we're moving into the time of judgment day which occurs and Tishri, Yom Kippur, yeah, Judgment Day. So the return of Christ, as it's known, is should be happening around Judgment Day, I guess, um, which would be a fulfillment of the fall feasts, because when Christ was here the first time, he fulfilled the spring feasts. So the equinoxes make up those holy days. It's really interesting, which uh, relate also to those seals that are opened in Revelation. Um, there's a lot of descriptions about the temple and you know, the altar being poured out and stuff. But anyway, to answer your question more specifically, uh, which angel, I think it was Azazel. And then there's another one that's of note that was Shem Yaza. And 
he was the one that wanted to take a wife, but his wife ended up asking him for uh, like a a favor before she agreed to do it, you know, like be his wife. And the one thing she asked for was to know the name of God, which then she said and ascended to heaven. So then it left him without a wife. So he was like one of the only fallen angels that ended up making this pact with all the others, but then ends up not having a wife and he becomes repentant apparently. And so <laughs> his story is kind of interesting too, because then he kind of hangs in heaven. And my suspicion is that Orion may represent Shinyaza who's stuck between heaven and earth. He's not allowed to come back to heaven but he doesn't want to be on earth because he's realized, you know, <laughs> he was in error, you know? So there are a few possibilities with these who, you know, the identity of some of these. But no definite answer as to why they started the battle. What was oh, sorry, the, I the got off topic. Uh, so what I think adds some clarification to that is the story in the Quran. Um, so they call uh, what we are thinking of as Satan and Lucifer, etc. They in the Zazzle, they call him Iblis, and he is a vision of fire, like a fire elemental. And um, so, this is to be distinct from angels because apparently God created angels to serve him, but then there was these beings of fire, and Iblis was a devotee to his creator to such the degree that I guess he gets promoted basically to be like at his right or left hand, you know, whichever. And, um, and then he creates Adam out of earth and uh, Iblis sees himself as superior to this earth creature and refuses to bow down to him. But what he doesn't understand is that uh, the creator had put his spirit into Adam when so whenever he refuses to obey and, and and bow he's actually denying god so in that instance he was oh. cast out so that's kind of like the full background story is that he that was his only sin was that right. so he's really and, quite separate from all the other satan quote unquote because all the other fallen angels and i understand left hand path is defined a certain way but so in a manner of speaking <laughs> Satan's left-hand path. So all the quote devils, fallen angels, have their own path mm. entirely. None of them are unified. However, the priest who falls that we're talking about here, Iblis, he actually kept every law and was so obedient that, like, some even speculate that that's part of the reason why he wouldn't bow was because he didn't want to have any god before God. So it was like his obedience was his fault at the same time. So you kind of see, and in the Bible, he's characterized as a cherubim, which is uh, like a Taurus, um, Taurus type energy. One, one of the order of the angels, right? Yeah, exactly. One of the cherubim or, or four uh, living creatures that make up his throne. Yeah. He's known as a cherubim. So he's like a bull, which again goes back to the papal bull. The spoken decrees of God are what he kept Whoa. because he's a priest so he is the cherubim <laughs> and so what well, happened is he wanted to sit think, in um, he wanted to sit in the throne though and become god so that too became the sin of quote lucifer mm. was that the priest think about sin. the maenad being the handmaidens to the bull god oh guys they are the, the elements and they are the the handmaidens to the bull god and now if you look at the bull god balder uh not balder ball. uh ball ball yeah and ball back lebanon right the, the the city of ball right that uh that whole story i mean archaeologists can look at it and tell that this one thing happened and that wasn't a a roman or greek empire it was thousands of years older the foundation stones are literally from thousands of years before the Greeks put the Temple of Jupiter on top of there, right? Yes. Mm. Real quick about and there's about Orion. We were uh, talking about roosters as well, and I found something nice interesting catch, here. 
Um, let's see. Yeah, this bit talking about that uh, with the constellations that the rooster is located. The constellation of the rooster is located below um, Orion. The I just... herald of the gods, the calling of the god, the herald of the gods, the the the, the screaming roosters that bring the gods forth in the battle, the Galahorn. Wow, the, just that like is... the story of Christ too. That's so wickedly, wild, man. <laughs> wickedly tied together. Yeah, are um, we all sons of the same God? I just, I just thought it was this was interesting since um, we've been talking about uh, roosters and the, uh, the like the the crowing of the roosters and Orion and it actually it syncs up it matches up uh, yeah. con con constellation wise you know in 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 the heavens. What time is it where you're at, brother? It's got to uh, be like two a.m. Uh, close to three a.m. Oh my lord. Listen, bro, we've been going at it for a hot minute. We've covered the stanzas. We got to save something for next time, dude. Yeah, I mean, dude, I could go on for another three hours. But yeah, uh, keely has been, uh, been bothering me as well. Like, hope you're, done I, uh, I hope you're done soon. Can I read a couple things from the chat here? Before yeah, we get of course, off, Just of, so they will be. Of course. Oh, yeah, no, we're not of course. jumping off right this second. But we'll, we'll wrap it up nice and slow and put a bow on it. Okay, cool, because it just won't be as relevant maybe next time. Uh, so we're talking about that king that would rise up. So that reminded me of something from Daniel 8.22. The four horns that replace the broken one represent four kingdoms that will rise from that nation, but will not have the same power. In the latter part of their reign, when the rebellion has reached its full measure, an insolent king skilled in intrigue will come to the throne. His power will be great, but it will not be his own. So another translation of verse 21 is, and in the latter time of their kingdom, when the when their transgressors are come to a fool, a king of fierce countenance and understanding dark sentences shall stand up. Um, so earlier when we were reading about the lamb who can stand against him, etc., I would say it's this character here who has a fierce countenance and understands dark sentences. Now that to me sounds a lot like Odin personally. Is that kind of It does, but it said the power that he wields is not his own. Well, it's given to him by the dragon. So that was in the stanzas there. So I'm not saying it is Odin. I'm just saying like, he's always got that brooding look on his face, like real serious. He's wise. Mirmir was a giant. <laughs> he gave Odin the power of the runes. There's a good point. And the knowledge. I'm Some things were just... given to him. Yeah, so <laughs> I just think that uh, Daniel is a very good companion to Revelation. So I just uh, encourage and that. To and talking about the uh, the tribe of Dan, you know, Dan, oh, yeah. Daniel. The I, judge. I wonder, I mean, I Daniel wonder... means judge or, God, or God's judgment. Yeah, I mean, just, you know, since we've been on, like, name weaving as well and, and, and just making connections there, seeing if there are connections there, I wonder if, you know, with the, with the tribe of Dan, the, the Tuatha de Danan and, and Daniel and whatever, I just, I just wonder. My mind wonders, you know, since we're, we're talking about... Well. We're talking in about Genesis, tribes in Genesis and uh, 49. The, there is a prophecy about Dan specifically. Um, I can read it for you real quick. Yeah, pl please, please do. Just satisfy my curiosity and then I can go to bed happy man. Because it'd be <laughs> right. kind of interesting to look at like Ragnarok's kind of like the end of the vulva, but it would be interesting to see what how that compares with like the Genesis quote unquote of the Norse tradition. Because, uh, make, you know, I'm in Genesis right now, and we're relating it to Ra Revelation. <laughs> so I would wonder if those themes crop up. Because a lot of times what's popular with, like, the Sumerian texts and some of the Vedic stuff is, like, the end is declared at the beginning. Um, yeah. Okay, so here it is. Uh, Genesis 49, 16. 
Dan shall provide justice for his people as one of the tribes of Israel. He will be a snake by the road, a viper in the path that bites the horse's heels so that its rider tumbles backward. I await your salvation, O Lord. Salvation is Joshua. Um, Dan, all, snakes, yeah. Ireland, dri driving the driving the snakes from from Ireland. <laughs> the snakes uh, were the pagans, man. Yeah, they were the pagans. They I were the. It could have been. The I think it could have been a um, possibly something else like giants or a bloodline or something you know i don't think it was necessarily the pagan if i, I mean if we're talking about the tribe of dan you know it it might have well, could have been them yeah yeah okay that's way to kind of compromise there yeah it could be one and the same if it was the tribe of dan i guess that makes sense i mean you know they have like celtic mythology i'm not very well versed in it that's that's why i love that um, Count Dankula is now actually doing a series on Celtic mythology. I love his videos. Count Dankula is awesome. Dude, we got to get him on the show. Um, but, but, I mean, he is a Scotsman. So, of course, you know, it's, it's for him, it's close to home. And I just, I love Celtic mythology. And with uh, Keeley having, you know, Irish and Scottish um, heritage, and like I've been to Scotland and, and England and they're beautiful countries and it just it fascinates me. So uh, the tribe of Dan is represented by a serpent, by the way. Um, I've Googled it or, you know, searched ah. it to verify. And yeah, definitely. Which is interesting because uh, in the wilderness, Moses raises up a staff with a serpent fixed to it. To yeah. Heal the people. For salvation and, and then uh, what's, what's that rod again with the uh with the serpent curled around it I'm, I'm not, not, is that the rod. caduceus no that's yes. the one with two snakes yeah the rod of a, the rod of a yeah, that's two. is what well, one snake there's a difference okay yeah so, the caduceus is mercury the caduceus represents like our kundalini moving up the spine whereas the rod of a is the serpent bearer which is the 13th zodiac quote the unquote the kundalini the dragon rising the phoenix rising from the ashes um think think about this too in the end of the greek mythos they had hermes and aphrodite up against a tree conversing with each other and a serpent came and wound them together so tight he created the hermaphrodite interesting which is a double Gender sounds being. a lot like the story in Genesis, yeah. Now, Hermes was Mercury, right? When the Romans depicted Mercur our Mercury God. Is, Mercury is Odin. Odin, right? We look at, they say mm -hmm. Mercury was the father of music. We Odin. look in Germany, we find the very first flutes, right? We found a 40,000-year-old flute in a cave in Germany. Plus, talking about being like dual gendered, both gendered, um, Odin practicing Seder, a female form of magic. He is a male god practicing through weird uh, female magic. I mean, it's maybe it's maybe it's stretching it, but. I'm I'm just saying at some point that that interpretation of Mercury being Odin and then them now see the way Tacitus wrote Germania, some of the gods he was witnessing firsthand. He was witnessing these tribes worshiping Mercury, as he called them, but it was Odin because they He was relating it to the Roman speaking gods. Of knowledge in the structure of society and bringing of music and vibration, you know, to, to bring mood that he witnessed so much of Mercury's tales and tellings that he related Odin to that. Right. Same with Hercules and Donar, Hercules and Thor, you know, Wait, both wielding a hammer a or a club mm -hmm. or, is there a relation to that with Mercury being bound with somebody in the Roman mythology? 
I don't believe so. Although Mercury is the um, Hermes. Well, he is the alchemical god, of course. Yes. You know. And and Hermes was the the creator of the lyre and the father of thievery and several other things. Isn't Odin associated with thieves sometimes? At times. Yeah, I've always thought that was kind of strange because I wouldn't think that he would normally have been a thief. Or, you know what I mean? Well, thieves were hanged and Odin was the god of the hanged man. Oh, okay. Whoa. Yeah. And in the Bible, by the way, it specifically enumerates that if you're hung from a tree, you're cursed. So there's something there because Christ was hung from a tree as well. To bear Odin the sins was of the hung world. from a tree. Yeah. So Odin is the, the god of the hanged man. Now, here's what's really cool. I've kind of had an epiphany about this recently. So Odin hangs from the tree upside down to scry the runes from below. He gets the word from below. Christ received the word from above. So Pentecost, he was given the word from above, whereas Odin was given the word from below. So it's like a right hand, left hand, but they both concern the logos. So I'm convinced that there's probably a uh, some type of correlation between runic, like Thuthark and Hebrew, that they probably have an, um, each letter probably has a correlation with the uh, other I language. See. Real quick, this is Mercury, and look at one of the animals associated <laughs> with the... him. It's a rooster. Yep. And look on his other side. It's a goat. It's a goat. It's a buck. That's weird. Yeah. Look at his hat. Winged, Winged cap of invisibility. Oh no, sorry, his, that is he has a cap of enlightenment. His his thinking cap. Um, <laughs> and in his but, hand, he has what? What's in his hand? The caduceus. Yeah. Uh huh. Good and point. he's considered one, uh, either the son of Maya. Uh, one of the seven daughters of the Titan Atla Atlas. Mm -hmm. um, uh, he's considered to be uh, Jupiter. You know, Greek equivalent. Son of Earth. the Titan Atlas and Greek Jupiter or Silvius. It does awarded, mention staff. Awarded yeah. a magic wand by Apollo, which later turned into the Caduceus, the staff with intertwined snakes. That's very close to the rod of Ashipolis because Ashipolis was the son of Apollo and Apollo slew the python. So Ashipolis would carry on like his father and be the serpent bearer. And so that's what the rod he, subsu he subsumed a earlier uh, deity. And we see that in certain um, North Germanic stories as well that he. Uh, that Tyr or Tiwas was the um, was the was the old father was the the head of the of the pantheon, but that Odin replaced him. Uh, or look at the Old Norse etymology of Mercury, guys. This right here is Mark. Mark, pretty pretty deep. Yeah, Mark. The <laughs> Mark. Say, Mark of the Beast is mercurial in nature because it deals with commerce. Yeah, um, so merchandise, really merchant, profound. commerce. He is considered, <laughs> oh, wow. he is the god the of financial salesman. Game, commerce, eloquence. Not to messages. mention the, the mark con contains mercury. <clears throat> he was yeah. the first salesman That's and his weird. tongue was so convincing that they made him the messenger between all the gods because he was so... <laughs> well spoken. He is the god of messages, communication, including divination. <laughs> was it because he could speak <laughs> things into existence, or was it because he could convince people easily? Such a weird topic, honestly. I should have looked into him already. Hey, why uh, isn't the uh, shepherds the shepherds uh, sometimes shepherds, yeah, stick thing? Modeled after the staff with the snake, perhaps. Oh but, uh, wait, no, that's your um. Uh, what it Shepherd's reminds? Hook. I can't think of a name it, of it. Yeah, no. What it reminds me of is one of the um. 
I, I, for, for the life of me, I, I don't know what it's called, but what the Egyptian pharaohs would uh, would have in their exactly. uh, in their hands. The that's what it. Yeah, that's what it reminds me reminds the me of. Flail was for threshing wheat, and the crook was you'd use that for like gathering a lamb, a lost lamb. Yeah. Oh, so, <laughs> this is this this is a whole deep, a whole other rabbit hole. <laughs> deep. Yeah. No, so there well, is a part three. <laughs> yeah, a part three, four, oh, yeah, five, six, seven. We're <laughs> we were, yeah. No, but I I do I do think we uh, we ought to uh, to wrap it up here. Leave leave something I for. Think, well, since you have we, a wolf behind you, can we at least talk about Fenrir just a little bit? Because we did talk about the sackcloth sun blacking out. Could that be somehow related to Fenrir eating the sun? And it keeps talking about this wolf in the stanzas. So I just wanted to mention that one thing about Fen the wolf. Fenrir's yeah. mouth. When Fenrir comes at Ragnarok, his mouth stretches from the ground to the sky. Okay. He he is Fenrir wasn't betrayed by Tyr. Tyr was commanded by Odin to bind him. Odin put the order out because he got a warning in the form of a prophecy that Fenrir would continue to grow until he engulfed them all. But it ended up being a self-fulfilling prophecy because by binding him... It worked itself right in a circle. Yeah. The Ouroboros, the, the Jormungandr, the never-ending stories, Orin, it's... Well, I was going to say the, do the dog in never-ending story, the nothing, was that... Uh... I can't remember his name. Gwar the Dark One. Yeah, I, you know what I I'm know talking about. <laughs> yes, I just but, watched uh, that movie with my four-year-old the other day. What a blast from the I've, past! I've seen, I've seen memes. You, the warrior. I've seen more memes come up uh, with um, like, why did, why are you, why is the nothing growing so strong? Well, because people they're lost, blocking their imagination. They lost their imagination. They lost their faith. Did, they lost their ways. Did you guys catch the Norse references in that? It's been ages. The since rock I've biting seen a movie, giant. Man. The nothing is Ganunga Gap. The rock biter is a oh, giant stone. Shit, dude. Bro, go back and betray you, the warrior kid on the horseback. There's so much. Well, here's another thing to consider is that when he's passing through those two sphinxes, he doesn't have any armor on because he's wearing the spiritual armor. And so His you armor is that. You'll find that in yes. uh, Ephesians where it talks about the spiritual armor, which again is a helmet, just like Hermes has a helmet there. There's the helmet of salvation, the breastplate of righteousness, the belt of truth, um, shield of faith, sword of spirit, and the feet shod with the gospel of peace. So I think those are all the pieces. <laughs> and yeah, then there's a cape, there's a cape of zeal, apparently, as well. Huh. But then you see those also in Jack the Giant Killer. He has got armor as well of various different types. So like, so it's very similar because, of course, it's, David killed giants. And in that Yahweh. movie, did Atreyu <laughs> actually pull a sword out and kill anybody? No. Or was his so. weapon his word? Yeah. He was just will. Will his his sword was of his will. Yes. His will. He carried the story from this place to this place. We carry the story. Let the too. human child know that his yeah. thought was creating the story that they were living in. And because he believed that Ganunga Gap was going to eat it all, it was. <laughs> A self fulfilling prophecy. And right you know, into the circle of Ragnarok. And talking I'm, I'm, and talking about the placebo effect again. Yeah, I was you know, just about to say we come full circle. <laughs> Is a prophecy like a self fulfilling prophecy? <laughs> yeah, prophecy, does a prophecy would it happen if it wasn't? Yeah, if it wasn't spoken and written down, would it still happen? Well, that's a very like, new age way of uh, of thinking. You know, just like don't talk about the evil, don't think about the evil. 
don't acknowledge the evil because by doing that you're giving it strength because you're directing energy to it it's a very new age way and a very very dangerous way of um of thinking because it it doesn't work like i i fell into that i fell into that trap i'm i'm not i'm not ashamed to admit it i fell into that trap just you know banish negative thoughts you know be all love and light and it worked for a week two weeks and then you know it caught up with me and i could no longer ignore it and i was like well this shit ain't working the most <laughs> convincing use of word is in positive ways where it creates the opportunity for people to agree with you and do it because they want to yeah. right as a poor, as opposed to using word to force something upon somebody, you give them the tool; they use their free will to carry it out. <laughs> I was going to say free free will again, free. right? But you don't command it of them. You use statements like, "Would you so kindly please reach down and smash that like button, subscribe to our channel, and come visit us in the tribe of the Gray Horn Pagans." <laughs> Cheap. And people Cheap. may feel so inclined to do, though. Cheeky little plug. <laughs> right. No, but no, that's that's definitely it. And that's, you know, that's that's guiding. That's guiding them. It's like, yeah, you're, I mean, you're telling them to do something. You're, you're asking the people to please like, subscribe, comment, ring that bell, and all that stuff. And indeed, visit us in the tribe of the Grey Horn Pagans while you're at it, you know. Um, Smash that like button for freedom and share it because <laughs> you want to. yeah you know but it's it's for the people themselves to decide if they want to do that they have the free will to you know do it or not but yeah i think yeah there's just just so many things to it and what you what you said about fenrir about his jaw uh reaching from the earth to the skies what that made me think of was a um, a snake, what, what? actually, and actually being able mm. to um, unhinge to, its jaw. To unhinge its jaw, like, we've all seen videos of, of like a snake eating an egg. Yeah, for example, or just you know a, a bigger kind of snake eating a freaking boar. You know, like you'll actually mm -hmm. see the shape of a boar just going through the snakes. Body. Look up, look up the video of the Everglades of the dude who caught a python eating an alligator, bro. <laughs> it didn't end well for either one of them. Is all I'm gonna say. They both died in the process. Oh yeah, I bet. No, well that's that's what it it made me made me think of because for as far as I know, they are the only uh, creatures like yeah, going back to back to snakes again that are actually able to unhinge their jaw and therefore just eat animals of pretty much any size. So if a serpent that was big enough to wrap around the world were to unhinge his jaw, he could possibly swallow the whole thing. Yeah. Like a serpent eating an egg. I know, I know you guys have seen that depiction before. Yeah, the Orphic egg. Not only, mine there. Not only do you oh, see like yeah, a yeah, Jormungandr, yeah, yeah. but you have a Jormungandr with like an egg in the middle of him, and it is the earth after he's eaten it. And he returns his mouth to his tail. Yeah, no, it's it's very... It's a very... And see, that's uh, what Thor would be trying to prevent, right? The consumption of Midgard by the serpent, essentially. See, yeah. in the Battle of Ragnarok, the gods know that they have a very specific role and there's nothing they can do to avoid it, but they're going to live on through their children. That's the one. And the, the egg, you know, the egg shape, the, the Vesca Pisces, the, yeah. you know, where um, Niflheim and Muspelheim where they meet in the middle that's where that's where it starts that where li that's where life was created in the vesca pisces in that roughly egg shape yeah 
in the world. Now look at Earth. Look at Earth, and if you're not a flat earther, you know the uh, the Earth is somewhat shaped like an egg or a oval, not quite perfectly round. No. Um, it the land mass at the South Pole holds more ice. It's actually shaped a little more like an egg right now than in the past ages because the thinning of the northern ice sheets and the thickening of the southern ones, right? But I, I want to bring this back to a, a really messed up piece of irony. In the 1970s, they had a climate crisis. Do you know what it was? Global warming, global cooling. Cooling, global cooling. They were afraid that a new ice age was going to come. They were telling the, everybody they had to stop the using years, cans. Yeah. yeah. They had to tell everybody that they stopped, had to use, stop using spray cans and all kinds of weird stuff because it was going to bring about global cooling. CFC and they I think used what they were called chlorofluorocarbons. Yeah. Yeah. You couldn't use chlorofluorocarbons. It's probably not good for the environment anyway. But <laughs> no, it isn't. But but yeah, that's I remember the one big of deal those luxury it, things. Know? And that was pre-internet those... too, before things were like able to really become infectiously a fad. So that right. just goes now, to show how powerful it was then. If you want your house to smell better, and you, let's say, warm up some potpourri, what's the effect on the environment? Pretty much nothing. There, there isn't one. No, but if same. you want your house to smell better, and you're a lazy asshole that doesn't want to go out and pluck potpourri, you get a can of Glade, and you release the CFCs and Febreze, or and... just all, kind, all kinds of chemicals. Right. And then you're putting this artificial stink into the air that may have a pleasant odor, but it's not natural, is not normal, and we are absorbing that. It's like the I mean, every luxury, really. Everything that we've created out of luxury to make our lives easier has made it harder on the earth. So maybe in order to make it easier on the earth, we need to go back to living slightly harder lives. Obviously, yeah, that's that's a given. Hey, our ancestors have survived. You know, they survived the hard times. They've survived the hard lives. We are, Dude, we are the result my mom, of it. My mom was one of eight siblings that lived on a farm growing up. You know what I mean? I've, I, I've got it very close in my genealogy. Oh yeah, man. Like to where to point where my my mom and dad taught me about the planting cycles and sharecropping and you know regrowth and. All of that good stuff, like oh yeah, and that, should, and that should and that should be normal to grow up that way. I think, like yeah. that shouldn't be an exception at all. And me, like especially from my um, from my father's side, you know, my my father grew up with one younger brother, two older brothers, two older sisters. He is the um, the second youngest, and you know they never really. Like they they weren't wealthy, you know. They they had to, you know, make do with what they had. My um, my grandfather, uh, best job he ever had was being a um, was being a postal man. You know, li delivering delivering mail, delivering letters. That was you know they still did that back then. <laughs> and it was less physically taxing and still a fulfilling job that needed to be done. Yeah, you know, it was a government. So after, it was it was a government job, you know, good pay. And uh, like my my dad, my dad fields. told me recently that you know he was so proud of his father, you know, with his like his his postal uniform, like it, it was an actual uniform that they would the wear symbol. back in the days. And my uh, my grandmother, well, late late grandfather, late grandmother, unfortunately, she uh, she always worked as a nurse, so. Yeah, they, you know, but sometimes, you know, times were hard. So you had to make do with what with what you had, but they always worked hard. My father has, both my parents have always worked hard. And therefore I and my siblings, my younger brother, my younger sister, we have, you know, been so fortunate as to grow up in well, relative luxury. So well, what, I, what I've... Our ancestors bought that idea. 
because they said, you know what, we can till the fields and they, they, they're the ones that made the transition from tilling the fields to getting an hourly wage job to do everything because it was less physically taxing, but equally as rewarding monetarily. Yeah, and both just hard work, both fo- the just track. very focused on the on the value of hard work. And yeah, uh, yeah, it's it's definitely it's definitely a trap because a desk job like it takes all of our skills away. Yeah, it's we're just, we're yeah. not we're yes. like we're literally not built to sit behind a desk eight hours a day. I mean, I've been in this this chair and I even have you know even have a cushion on it for you know as long as we're doing the podcast now. I I lost track of time. But you know, I'm I'm feeling it. I'm I'm feeling it in my back. I'm feeling it in my in my shoulders. Like we're not built for we're this. Three and a half hours in, almost four if you count the pre-conversation. Oh, that's yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> we'll have a lot of interesting show clips from this one. Yeah, I'm I'm gonna have to find a editor because you know. Well, you I'm, said you were gonna get an intro, right? Somebody was going to get yeah. Chris, uh, Chris was um, Chris is still designing a uh, or st- still putting together a intro uh, for us, and um, like I've, I've been fiddling around with um, with things as well. So, but makes some pretty cool stuff. Yeah, yeah, he sure does. He sure does. He's he's a true artist. Well. Let me take the cue. You can find me everywhere <laughs> at Child of Ash 420 in the tribe of the Greyhorn Pagans. I've got an Odyssey channel at Child of Ash 420. Find me on Minds at Child of Ash 420 on Twitter at the same. And uh, if you want to find me where I lay down almost everything, I drop it in the tribe. Every video I post, whether it's on Minds or Odyssey, it always winds up in the tribe first. So if you want first cut, Come to the tribe, man. Come talk to us. We're there. Like he he literally posts everything in the tribe. Like does it doesn't matter. <laughs> All right. Everything. Out Brand. of my head and into the tribe. Yeah. No, no filter. Nothing. Just and if if you do join into the tribe and read some of that, I'm apologizing <laughs> fans because it's gonna offend some of you guys. I talk about things I shouldn't, you know, so we're we're very Maybe open. I, I we're very open in that tribe. area. We're very open in the we're tribe. Fair. You know, we like yeah, we do we do have certain rules, but it's more common sense rules. Although unfortunately, you know, we have to put it in there because well, you know. But anyway, branch, uh this, you know, this pl- like attracts some of the worst. <laughs> sometimes it does. But branch, uh plug yourself, plug your uh plug your stuff. We're uh, we're gonna wrap it up here save something for uh for part three four five six <laughs> well until until the <laughs> wind sweat tree uh falls right uh yeah so thank you again for hosting us uh i know it, i know it's a long one but it's it's fun and um after all who who out there is is making these uh comparisons so i think we're, we're doing some important work and i appreciate it so thank you so much for allowing me to join you folks and um, I'll continue studying on this topic so that you know, I can add more to the next. How many hey, it's been an honor are. picking your brain as it is, man. <laughs> it's uh, uh, yeah, it's been, it's been awesome. You've been, uh, you've been bringing in some, uh, some really good information and uh, just the, uh, the comparison between the, uh, between Revelations and Ragnarok and everything else, it's just like we we've had some some crazy things and some some good weaves. So it's been it's been good having you. Been weird, even. Yeah. In the, weird is the way, man. In the, the way. In the best ways possible. In the best ways possible. So, so ladies and gentlemen, we are going to wrap it up here this has been the Greyhorn Pagans podcast on Ragnarok Rock part two uh, we are definitely going to do even more parts as the branch put it so eloquently until the windswept tree falls like until Ragnarok Rock 
actually comes until we are physically unable to do this. We are going to continue on this series just because it's hella fun and very interesting. We're learning a lot. So thank you all. You can find the Greyhorn Pagans on Telegram at t.me slash Greyhorn Pagans. We are on Minds as well. Uh, we have a Odyssey channel, a lot of the uh, a lot of the podcasts in their video form, the raw video form, are going up on my personal YouTube channel. And we now also have a Patreon. So if you want to, uh, if you want to support us, if you want to support the tribe, if you support, if you want to support our work, so that we may continue do this. Um, you can support us on patreon.com slash Greyhorn Pagans. We have a couple different tiers to choose from. And yeah, thank you all. Thank you guys. And thank you to everyone um, who is currently not here anymore, but who was here. Uh, it's been, it's been great. It's been a pleasure. And until next time, guys.